Lucky Strike program starring Jack Benny with Mary Livingston, Phil Harris, Rochester, Dennis Day, and yours truly, Don Wilson. Ladies and gentlemen, today marks Jack Benny's first program on the Columbia Broadcasting System. So, let's go back a couple of hours and pick up Jack and Mary on their way to the studio. Rochester is driving. <laughs> Not so fast, Rochester. Don't cross the double line. Look out for that car. What's the matter with you? I'm driving as carefully as I can, boss. Well, just watch it, that's all. Oh, for heaven's sake, Jack, calm down. Don't be so nervous. I'm not nervous. Then stop pacing up and down on the running board. <laughs> okay, Mary, I'll admit it. I am nervous, and you can't blame me. Today's my opening broadcast on CBS. All right, so you're opening on CBS. What do you mean, all right? Do you realize it's the first time my program will be heard in Alaska? So what? Anyway, Mary, I'm upset. Oh, for heaven's sake, Jack, why should you be worried? You must have a million dollars down in your vault. I know, but I don't want to break up the serial number. (laughs) I mean, Mary, stop asking me questions, will you? I'm in no... Rochester, I don't want to have an accident on the way to the studio. Now, slow down. I'm only going 12 miles an hour. (laughs) Don't give me that. What does it say on the speedometer? Made in 1899. (laughs) I mean, besides that... Jack, you're working yourself into a breakdown. Rochester, see if you can get something on the radio so Mr. Benny can relax. Yes, ma'am. That concludes another broadcast by your friendly philosopher. And now for a special announcement. Remember, only two more hours and Jack Benny will be on CBS. Turn that off! (laughs) That's all they've been broadcasting for the past week. Six more days for Jack Benny. Five more days for Jack Benny. Four more days. Two more hours. Well, Jack, if you don't like it, make him stop it. I will not. (laughs) (laughs) I can't figure you out. First you don't like it, then you do like it. I've never never seen you this way. He's been a nervous wreck all week, Miss Livingston. Last night he didn't sleep a wink. He just kept tossing and turning and whimpering like a baby. Well, wasn't there anything you could do for him? I tried everything. I even threw him over my shoulder and burped him twice. <laughs> oh, Rochester, stop exaggerating. I'm not exaggerating, boss. You've even been talking in your sleep. Talking in his sleep? Yeah. Miss Livingston, who is William Paley? Uh, William Paley is the head of the Columbia Broadcasting System. Why? He has now replaced Henry Lamar in Mr. Benny's dream. Stop, Rochester. I, I never dreamed about Mr. Paley. Look, Rochester, I'm upset enough as it is without your discussing... Oh, fine. That's all I need now, a traffic cop. Rochester, he wants us to pull over to the curb. Caught you, didn't I? <laughs> What's the matter, officer? Were we speeding? Don't flatter yourself. You went through a red light. Officer, the light was green when we started through the intersection. Yeah, I know, but it changed twice before this jalopy got across. <laughs> Look, officer, I'm afraid this is my fault. I'm in a hurry. I'm talking to the driver, so keep your... Bi- Wait a minute. You're Jack Benny, aren't you? Yes, yes, I am. Well, then you must be on your way to the studio to do your first broadcast for CBS. That's right. Well, only a louse would give you a ticket on a day like this. (laughs) Well, thank you. Uh, Shake hands with Officer Sam Louse. (laughs) What? I'm sorry, Mr. Benny, but duty is duty. Now, I'll write this. Calling all cars. Calling all cars. Uh, Excuse me a minute. This may be important. Attention all officers. There has been a holdup on 4th and Olive. Investigate a double murder at Hill and Grand. Only two more hours and Jack Benny will be on CBS. <laughs> Gee, they have that announcement on your radio, too. Gee, the police must like my program. Yes, they use it down at headquarters for the third degree. 
third degree. It, twice I confessed, and I didn't even do anything. <laughs> well, you can go, Mr. Benny, and I won't give you a ticket. I can't stand the tears in those big blue eyes. Thank you. Go ahead, Rochester. Drive on, will you? Just a second, boss. I've got to start the motor. Oh, gee whiz, Jack. I hope you don't have trouble starting it like you always do. Don't worry about that. I mean, yesterday I had the motor tuned. Go ahead, Rochester. Start it. Uh, who tuned it? Spike Jones? <laughs> Mary, please. Rochester, try it again, will you? Don't worry, boss. I'll get this motor started. But close your eyes. Why? I'm going to use the whip. <laughs> I don't care what you use. Let's get to the studio. <laughs> See, Mary, they've got a nice lot here, haven't they? Yeah. Uh, here's your parking ticket, mister. Thank you. And, boy, be careful when you park my car. Why? Come on, Mary uh, Say, Jack as, uh, as we drove in Did you see that big sign on the building? The big sign? Or what did it say? Uh, Jack Benny has switched to CBS Bill Harris has switched to Sterno <laughs> Oh, yes It was his New Year's resolution Well, here's the artist entrance Let's go in Oh, doorman Yeah? I'm Jack Benny I don't care who you are Wipe your feet <laughs> Well, look, when Mr. William Paley comes in, tell him I want to see him right away, will you? Okay. You know, Mary, even though I'm trying to keep calm, I can't help being nervous today. Well, here we are, Studio B. Well, I want to see what my dressing room is like. I'll meet you later. Okay. Oh, hello, Phil. Oh, hold it, fellas, hold it. All right, break it up a minute. Hiya, Jackson. Welcome to Petrillo's Inner Sanctum. <laughs> look, Phil. Phil, I want to talk to you. Me? Yeah, look, at here it is, a new year. We're starting on a new network. So, Phil, you've got to do something about your musicians. And... Why, what's wrong with my lads? <laughs> look, Phil, look, I don't expect them to wear full dress suits. I don't even want them to wear coats or jackets. But for the love of heaven, why don't they wear ties? Well, Jackson, most of these boys are out on parole and they don't want nothing around their neck with a knot in it. <laughs> that I can understand. But the worst of all is your pal, Remley. He's a disgrace. Hold it, Jackson. Just a minute now. Hold it. Calm down a little bit. Don't say nothing about Frankie. You ought to be a little more considerate of him. Since he was a baby, poor Frankie never had no mother or, or father. Oh, Oh, I'm sorry, Phil. I didn't know that Remley was an orphan, you know. Oh, he ain't no orphan. When he was born, his folks took one look at him and joined Parents Anonymous. <laughs> look, Phil, there's so much work to be done. I'm so nervous. Now, I want to make sure that you picked a good number for our first program. What are you and the boys going to play? Jackson, I've been given a plenty of thought. In fact, I've been thinking about it all week, and I finally decided on that's what I like about this song. <laughs> oh, no, Wait a minute. Oh, wait, Phil, don't start that over here. I haven't told you this before, but that song is what drove Edgar Bergen into retirement. <laughs> now, believe me. Okay, Jackson, okay, if that's the way you feel about it. Now, look, about that dialogue stuff on this show, shall we try that old running gag about hunting bear? No, 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 you hooked me on that too often. But hey, wait a minute. I'll tell you, let's do it. But this time, Phil, let me pull it on you. You see, I'll start it by saying, hello, Phil, would you like to come hunting with me up in the high Sierras? Certainly, Jackson. Are you going to hunt moose? No, I'm going to... <laughs> Moose? Phil, that's not right. What am I supposed to ask you? Are you going to hunt bear? No, I'll be wearing buttons and bows. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Harris, they might not let you sing your song on this network, but you'll allow some up some way. <laughs> Phil, that's the last time I want to hear that joke. Now, play any number you want. i got to go out and look for Mr. Paley. All right, fellas, look, let's run over Dennis' song first. You all ready, kid? Yeah, I'm ready, Phil. <laughs> Gee, Mary, I I've looked all over for Mr. Paley. Here he is, the head of the whole Columbia Network. I can't find him. He must be around here someplace. Well, let's go in and rehearse the script first. We haven't got much time, you know. Okay, you know, the closer we get to doing the broadcast, the more nervous I am. Come on, let's get back into the... Jack, look out! Oh, for goodness sake, who was that? 
Gene Autry. <laughs> Gene Autry? Side saddle? <laughs> What a studio this is. Ah. If his horse has a better dressing room than I have, there's going to be trouble. Now, come on, Mary. I want to see Mr. Paley before we go on the air. And then we'll Oh, try... hello, Mr. Benny. I just finished rehearsing my song. Huh? Oh, hello, Don. I mean, Phil. Jack, it's Dennis. Oh, yes. Yeah. So, Dennis. Hey, wait a minute. Dennis, why are you wearing that top hat, white tie, and tails? Well, it's our first show on CBS, and I thought I'd dress up. Well, Dennis, I think that's very nice of you renting a full-dress suit for our first broadcast. Oh, I didn't rent it. This is the suit my father got married in. <laughs> oh. Well, Dennis, you should have had it clean. There's ketchup on the lapel. Well, oh, that's not ketchup. My father wouldn't say I do, and my mother punched him in the nose. <laughs> Look. Look, Phil. I mean, Dennis. Look, I'm glad you dressed up for our first show. Well, you know, Mr. Benny, Charlie McCarthy starts on CBS today, too. No, no, Dennis. Now, don't get mixed up. I'm the only one who's starting today, not Charlie McCarthy. Well, that's funny. I heard the doorman say to somebody, we've got that dummy over here now. (laughs) Yeah, I wonder who he meant. Well, it isn't Mary, so it must be either you or me. Dennis, don't bother me with that talk. I've got to go in and... Hey, Jack. Jack. What? Did you notice it? Certainly, Mary. I noticed it the minute I saw him. Well, uh, why don't you ask him? No, no, Mary. You ask him. Not me. All right, I will. Dennis. Dennis, I want to get something straight. Look it. You wanted to dress up for our first broadcast at CBS. Is that right? Uh Uh-huh. So you put on your father's top hat, white tie, and tails. But why are you wearing hip boots? I couldn't find the pants. Well, serves me right for asking. I, anyway, I'll take one more chance. Dennis, why wear hip boots? Why didn't you wear your own pants? I did, but I lost them by force of habit. What? As I passed NBC, I walked by, but my pants walked in. <laughs> Come on, Mary. Instead of talking to him, I could have seen Mr. Paley. Hey, let's go in. We'll, we have to rush this before we get through. One, two, three, four. One, two, What's three, this? four. Hello, Joe. Testing, testing. One, two, three, four. Hey, what are you doing? I'm the engineer. I'm testing the microphones. Jack Benny will be on the air in a few minutes. I know, I know. Yeah, who wouldn't know? With all this fuss they're making, you would think they were getting Al Pierce. (laughs) Oh, yeah? Well, let me tell you something, buddy. I happen to be Jack... Oh, Jack, Jack. Oh, hello, Mary. I mean, Don. Don, hello. (laughs) Excuse me, Don. I'm so nervous today. Well, I can understand that, Jack. I'm jittery myself. I've got butterflies in my stomach. You have? Don, you could have the Northwestern football team in your stomach. They'd make more yardage than they did in the Rose Bowl. Stand by, please. Three minutes. Three minutes. I can't understand why Mr. Paley didn't come down to see me. Now I'll be a nervous wreck all through my first show. Two minutes and a half. How do you like that? One, two, three, four. Hello, Mom. Dennis! <laughs> Get away from that microphone. I can't understand what... Oh, that must be Mr. Paley now. Come in. Come in. Yes? Mr. Benny? Yes? I'm Don Thornburg, the head of the Western Division of the Columbia Broadcasting System. Oh, how do you do, Mr. Thornburg? <laughs> uh, what, uh, what, uh, what can I do for you? Well, I understand you've been looking for Mr. Paley. Yes, yes, I have. Uh, where, where is he? Well, Mr. Paley is in New York. He only comes out here on urgent business. Well, this is... <laughs> this is rather important... Mr. Thornburg, but perhaps you can help me. Huh? Well, I hope so. What is it? Well, well. Yes, Mr. Benny, what is it? Well, do you have the authority to validate my parking lot ticket? <laughs> Mr. Thornburg! Five seconds! Mr. Thornburg, come back! Two seconds! Mr. Thornburg! You're on the air! Oh, yeah. Hello again. This is Jack Benny talking. Mr. Payne! Mr. Payne! Mr. Payne! Mr. Payne! Mr. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. Strike 
Tonight, program starring Jack Benny with Mary Livingston, Phil Harris, Rochester, Dennis Day, and yours truly, Don Wilson. Ladies and gentlemen, one of the most popular restaurants in the country is the Brown Derby in Hollywood. So let's go back to yesterday afternoon and look in as the Brown Derby's head waiters handle the overflow luncheon crowd. Oh, Gus, did you see Mr. Gable at his usual place? No, Chilius. Mr. Gable joined Eve Arden and her party. Well, that's good. There's so many people waiting. Well, perhaps we can set up some more tables. Hey, Chilius, look who's coming in. Jack Benny. You take care of him. Uh, no, Gus. It's your turn this time. <laughs> It's your turn. All right, all right. I'll take care of him. He changed networks. Why doesn't he change the restaurants? <laughs> oh, Jack, here comes Chilius. Yeah, he'll get us a table. Well, good afternoon, Mr. Benny. Uh, hello, Chilius. I'd like a table. They have some lovely tables at Romanoff's. <laughs> I know. Uh, Romanoff sent us here. Oh. Good afternoon, Miss Livingston. I didn't see you. I'm awfully sorry, Mr. Benny. You'll have to wait. Every table in the place is taken. Well, maybe we... Hey, Mary, look. Hey, look, there's Jimmy Stewart having lunch all by himself. I'll ask him if we can sit at his table. Uh, but, Jack, if he's eating by himself, maybe he prefers to be alone. Oh, don't be silly, Mary. You'll be glad to have company. Come on. Only, uh, let me do the talking. Well. Right. Hey, Mary! Look who's here! <laughs> hmm? Oh, hello, Jack. Hello, Mary. Well, if it isn't Jimmy Stewart. <laughs> you know... You know, uh... You know, Jack, uh, Hollywood's a funny place. You say, well, if it isn't Jimmy Stewart and everybody in the Brown Derby applaud. <laughs> Yes. By the way, Jimmy, we're in a hurry and all the tables are taken. Would you mind if we joined you? How can he say no? You're already eating his rolls. <laughs> There's enough for both of us. Sure, sure. Come on, just sit down here. Here, I'll make room for you, Mary. Well, thank you. There we are. Now, Jack, I'll move over to you. Oh, just sit still, Jimmy. You need move for me. I'll squeeze right in here and then we can... <laughs> Whoops! <laughs> oh, I'm... I'm sorry, Jimmy. I knocked over the pitcher and spilled the water. Oh, that's all right. With this weather, it froze before it hit the floor. <laughs> that's right. It, it, here, Jimmy, let me hand you my napkin. And... <laughs> I, uh, I knocked over the ketchup bottle. Uh, better, uh, better wipe it off, Jimmy. You look like an ad for blood on the moon. Yeah, I'm sorry, Jimmy. You know, uh, Jack, I've been sitting here eating for 30 minutes. Uh, you've been here 10 seconds, and you've got more on me than I've got in me. Well, I... <clears throat> well, I, I guess it's because we're in such a hurry. I take your orders, please. Yes, yes. I'll have a club sandwich and a, a cup of coffee. Yes, sir. Yours, Miss Livingston? Oh, dear, I don't know what to have. Uh, what's that you're eating, Jimmy? Oh, it looks delicious. Oh, this is something my mother always used to make for me. It's my favorite dish. Uh, what is it? Matzo ball soup. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh. Uh, Chilius, I'll have a Caesar salad and a pot of tea. Yes, Miss Livingston. Uh, by the way, Jimmy, I saw your latest picture, You Gotta Stay Happy. And you and Joan Fontaine certainly make a wonderful combination. Oh, well, thanks, Mary. Uh, you made that picture for Universal, didn't you, Jimmy? Yes, yes. Before that, I made Rope for Warners, and then I made one over at MGM. One is Century, and then oh, one at 20th Century, and then one for Paramount. Keep a steady... What's the matter? Can't you keep a steady job? <laughs> Jack. Jack. It's just that Jimmy prefers to freelance. Oh, oh. Uh, by the way, Jack, uh, what have you been doing lately? 
Well, I've, uh, I've been rather busy with radio. Radio? Well, aren't you a little late getting into that with television and everything? <laughs> no, no, Jimmy. I've been in radio for 17 years. But I haven't made a picture since I was at Warner's. And I left there because there was always a big issue, you know, when it came to casting. Well, I can understand that, Jack. You and Errol Flynn are the same type. <laughs> yes. Yes, we are. Uh, Jack had the same trouble with MGM, but they decided to keep Lassie. <laughs> anyway, Jimmy, I'm not appearing in pictures because I'm producing them now. Oh, I didn't know you were producing pictures, Jack. Oh, yes, yes. As a matter of fact, I just finished my first one. It's called, uh, The Lucky Stiff, starring Dorothy L'Amour, Brian Dunleavy, and Claire Trevor, soon to be seen at your neighborhood theater. Jack, uh... What are you yelling for? <laughs> Jimmy, if these people can eat here, they can afford to go and see it, you know. You know, a plug's a plug. And then... Mr. Benny, if you'd like, you can move over to this table here. Chilius, I thought you didn't have any empty tables. We've got a lot of them now. <laughs> well, well, we'll just we'll just stay where we are. Yes, sir. Here's your food. We'll get the salad, please. Oh, the salad is mine. Now, let's see. What were we talking about before the food came? The, p the picture you produced, the Lucky Salad. No, no, the Lucky Stiff. Oh, oh. <laughs> Say, you know, Jimmy, I've just been thinking. You're a nice guy, and here you've been having a tough, not working steady at one one studio. So I'm going to do you a big favor and put you in my next picture. <laughs> <laughs> Jimmy. Jimmy. Jimmy, what happened? Jimmy. Oh, that's the first time I ever saw anyone choke on a matzo ball. I probably surprised him with my offer. <laughs> yeah, yes, you certainly did. Uh, but, Jack, uh, uh, the only reason I can't accept it is because I have so many other commitments. Well, Jimmy, we can make it after you fulfilled your other commitment. But, Jack, after that, I want to take a vacation. No buts, Jimmy, my boy. Look, and I'll make a big star out of it. Now, you've got to let me make this picture with you. Now, what's the salary you usually get per picture? $200,000. Take some water. The water is on the floor. So are you. Huh? Oh, yes, yeah. Jack, uh, you better discuss this with Jimmy some other time. It's getting late, and the whole gang will be waiting at the studio for rehearsal. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> I'll get the check. Waiter, waiter, our check. Waiter, waiter. Jack, just call him. Don't wave your toupee. <laughs> Jimmy, this isn't a toupee. It's just a small hairpiece. Hairpiece? I'd like to have a fur coat like that. <laughs> I'd like to have you read your line right. <laughs> Jack. What? Suppose I run along and start the rehearsal. Well... Well, see you later, Jack. Goodbye, Jimmy. So long, Mary. Hey, Jimmy. Have you heard the way people are talking about Mary lately? Talking about Mary? Yes, I hate to see this, uh, say this, really, but... But have you noticed... <laughs> have you noticed how she always leaves the table... Just before they bring the check. <laughs> it's embarrassing, you know. I hate to see it, too, you know. But anyway, Jimmy, getting back to the picture I want you to do for me. Now, I have a story. Excuse me for interrupting, but I happen to have a snapshot of you, Mr. Benny. Would you mind autographing it? Oh, I'd be happy. Hey, Jimmy, would you mind lending me your fountain pen? Not at all. Here you are, Jack. Thanks. Now, let's see... With my very best wishes, Jack Benny. Here you are, lady. Uh, thank you very much. It was nice meeting you. Oh, wait a minute, lady. This is Jimmy Stewart. Don't you want his autograph? No, but 30 years ago I would have. <laughs> Look, Jimmy, I've got to run over to CBS and rehearse my show. Suppose you come along with me, and we'll discuss a deal for a picture. No, then... uh, no, Jack, I'd rather not. Here's the check, gentlemen. 
Oh, thank you, Julia. No, Jimmy, let me take it. After all, it was your table, and Mary and I barged in. So I insist on paying it. No, no, Jack. I'd feel better if I paid for it. Well, if your health is involved, go ahead. <laughs> well, I've, um, i got to run along and... See, my hands are kind of sticky. Where's my napkin? Oh, here it is. Hmm. I can't pull it up. What's the matter with this napkin? You've got my shirt tail. <laughs> no, no. Well, here, I'm, I'm through with it. Um, <laughs> go on, Jimmy. Goodbye, Jack. Hiya, Jack. Well, hello, Jack. Hello, Mr. Benny. Hello, kids. Uh, by the way, Jack, did Jimmy Stewart agree to let you produce his next picture? Well, not yet, Mary, but I'm sure he'll come around to talk to me about it. Now, come on, kids. We've got a rehearsal to do, so let's get started. Mr. Benny, I've read over my part three times already. Well, good, Dennis. Nice to know that you're diligent. Diligent? Are we doing a gangster sketch? That's killing <laughs> Well, don't I get nothing for being close? No. And Phil, look at Phil, watch your cue. Now, you come into the sketch on page 21. 21? Yes. That's all your fingers, all your toes, and one more. (laughs) Now, Mary, in this sketch, you're going to play the part of Dennis's wife, and you've just gotten married. Uh, Dennis and I are newlyweds? Yes. And you're in Niagara Falls on your honeymoon. Where am I? What? I don't know about you, kid, but I'm on page 22. That's 21. I got 11 toes. <laughs> Phil, you miscounter. Try again. Now, Mary, as soon as we try... Jack, what was that? I don't know. Who fired that shot? I did. That reverberation you just heard was the result of a firearm that I discharged to test the acoustical quality of the studio. Acoustical quality? Who are you? I'm Herbert, your sound effects man. Oh, oh. Well, look, Herbert, don't try any more shots. All I want are the sound effects that are written into the script. Well, you can depend on me, Mr. Benny. For years, I have devoted my artistry to dramatic shows, and I have mastered the most difficult sound effects ever heard on radio. Really? Yes. One in particular baffled every sound effects man in the industry. But by perseverance and sheer ingenuity, I managed to reproduce it. I see. It was on the prudential hour. The scene was a moonlit night, and two lovers were dancing out on the patio. Oh, yes, yes, I heard that show. As the soft music filled the balmy summer evening, the two lovers drew closer and closer until his cheek lightly brushed against hers. That was the most delicate sound effect of all. Well, I should imagine it was. How did you get the sound of his cheek delicately brushing against hers? I slapped a hot water bottle with a piece of raw liver. (laughs) Gosh! (laughs) Say, those are the kind of effects we need on our show. Now, Mary, I'll write a scene where you brush my cheek, you know, against your, your cheek against mine. See? But, Jack, liver's 90 cents a pound. <laughs> well, just kick me in the pants. It's cheap. <laughs> now, Don, let's take the rehearsal from that scene where we're in the house and there's a knock on the door. Okay, Jack. Herbert, uh, give us a knock on the door. No, no, Herbert, a little louder. Herbert, that still isn't loud enough. Uh, why is the knock so soft? I use Jergens. <laughs> oh. Well, then maybe we ought to have a doorbell instead of a knock. There, that's more like it. Well, I didn't do that. What? Jack, there's really someone at the door. Huh? Oh, Don, you're near the door. Open it, eh? Say, Jack, it's Jimmy Stewart. You see, Mary, what did I tell you? Came after me already. Come on in, Jimmy. Thanks. Uh, what can I do for you? Well, Jack, I hate to break in on your rehearsal like this, but there's something I want to talk to you about. Oh, Jimmy, it's quite all right. We have plenty of time. Not me. i got to go to Niagara Falls and meet Mary. (laughs) Dennis, be quiet. Now, Jimmy, what is it you wanted to talk to me about? It's about the picture. You see, Mary? 
Now, Jimmy, we can start production on the picture just as soon as I mean we... the picture you autographed at the Derby. <laughs> you kept my fountain pen. <laughs> oh, oh. I wouldn't have bothered, but it's a lifetime pen, and I'm young yet. <laughs> Yes, yes. Uh, here's your pen, Jimmy. Thanks. Now, Jimmy, let's get back to business. I know you made a swell picture call. You got to stay happy. But I can do so much for you that... Jack, why don't you leave him alone? Can't you see that Jimmy's not interested? But, Mary, I can help him. He doesn't need help. He's already won an Academy Award. An Academy Award, Jimmy? For what picture? Philadelphia story. Who cares about Philadelphia? I'm going to Niagara Falls. <laughs> Damn it! Now, be quiet. You know, uh, Mary, you know, uh, you're just about the only sensible one around here. <laughs> and you know something else? I, I think you're very pretty, too. Oh, Jimmy, do you really mean it? Yeah, sure. Of course I do. Come over here, Mary. You know, you have, you have such beautiful eyes and such a lovely complexion. Oh, Jimmy. Maybe sometime I could take you out dancing in the moonlight. Just the two of us, maybe, and out on the patio. He's getting close to her, Herbert. Get ready with the liver. <laughs> Mr. Day. <laughs> Dramatic actors get bigger laughs than comedians. Now, look, Jimmy. Jimmy, let's settle, let's settle that picture deal we've been talking about. Well, Jack, I... I uh, You're supposed to be I, mad here. Oh, I, uh, Jack, I just can't make a picture with you this year. Okay. You got to be a ward he can't read. <laughs> Jack, I just can't make a picture with you just you. <laughs> You'll have to excuse me yeah? I'm going over to dressing room G I have to look over a dramatic script Oh, that's right next door, Jimmy I'll show you where it is Kid, I'll be back in a minute <laughs> So, Jimmy, as I pointed out to you, it'll be to your advantage to make this picture for me. Jack, now, you've been talking to me for an hour and a half since we came into the dressing room here. Now, will you please just let me lie here and relax? How about it, will you? Okay, okay, Jimmy. See you later. Yeah, da dee da dum da dee da dum da dee da dee da dum He'll be back, da dee da dum Oh, Jack. Huh? Oh, hello, Jimmy. Jack, uh, I came out here to talk to you. Yes, yes, about the picture. No... Not about the picture. Then what is it, Jimmy? Jack, I realize now that when you took my fountain pen and the brown derby, you wanted me to follow you around. What? So, uh, when you took me into the dressing room and told me to lie down and relax and put my feet up on the chair, I should have known you were up to something. Huh? Jack, uh, give me back my shoes. <laughs> Oh, yes, yes, your shoes. Here you are, Jimmy. I'll thank you for my socks, too. <laughs> oh, yeah, your socks. Now, Jimmy, as long as you've got a few minutes while you're putting on your shoes and socks, let's talk about the picture. Now, if you will just... Now, no try... more talk, Jack. I told you I have too many commitments, and that settles it. Okay, Jimmy, but if you just change your mind, come around and see me. Well, I won't change my mind. Say it isn't so. <laughs> Little does he know. <laughs> la, 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 la. Now, come on, kids. Let's finish the rehearsal and make it snappy. Rochester's waiting for me out in the parking lot with my car. <laughs> well, Mr. Barry will be out in about a half hour. I better start warming up the motor. <laughs> Must 
be something wrong with the battery again. I better take a look. Now, let's see. There's the battery, and it has the positive and the negative. Then there are the sparks. The sparks are supposed to go from the electrons to the electrodes. Or maybe they go from the generator to the distributor. Or then again, maybe they go from NBC to CBS. <laughs> yeah, I think this loose wire here is the trouble, so I'll just fasten it and... Hello, Rochester. Huh? Oh, hello, Mr. Stewart. Say, has Mr. Bennett come out of the studio yet? No, but he should be here any minute. Uh, by the way, Mr. Stewart, I was over to your house the day before Christmas. Mr. Bennett had me drop off a package for you. Did you get it? Yes, but this time there was too much starch in the collars. <laughs> well, don't look at me. I'm rough dry. Mr. Bennett's the starch man. <laughs> oh, okay. You know, Rochester, your boss amazes me. How long has he been in the laundry business? Oh, a long, long time. Say, Mr. Stewart, you were born May 8th, 1911, weren't you? Yes, that's right. How'd you know? You used to take our diaper service. I did? <laughs> yeah. It broke Mr. Benny's heart the way you and Gary Cooper grew up so fast. <laughs> but, uh... Uh, Rochester, I still can't understand a man of Mr. Benny's position having a laundry service in his home. Oh, the laundry's just a sideline. A sideline? Uh-huh. Mr. Benny does more business in his living room than Eastern Columbia, Broadway at night. <laughs> yeah. On dollar day, you can't get near the joint. All right, Rochester. Are we ready to go? Yes, boss. All set. Good. Now, first, I want you to drive me to... Uh, Jack. I'd like to see you for a second. Oh, hello, Jimmy. So you finally changed your mind and you want to appear in my picture? No, 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 it's not that. There's uh, something I'd like to ask you. What is it? Now, look, uh, Jack, I, you've been using little tricks so I'd follow you around all day, hmm? Well, yes, I must admit I did. You're, you're not angry, are you, Jimmy? Oh, no, no, no. But tell me one thing. What is it, Jimmy? I, I, I know how you got my fountain pen. Uh-huh. I can even figure out how you got my shoes and my socks. Yeah. But how in the name of heaven did you get the filling out of my tooth? <laughs> I'll tell you when we finish the picture. Come on, Rochester. Drive the car. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to thank Jimmy Stewart for following me around on my program today. And next Sunday, listen in to CBS lineup. The Prudential Hour, Spike Jones. Jack. Just a minute, Jimmy. And after Spike Jones comes Jack Benny, that's me, and my guests will be Mr. and Mrs. Ronald Coleman. Jack. Jimmy, just a minute. Sam Spade. Jack, I've got to talk to you. And his life with Luigi, our Miss Brooks, and Helen Hayes. Jack. What is it, Jimmy? I want to go home. Give me my pants. <laughs> there you are. Good night, folks. Starring Jack Benny with Mary Livingston, Phil Harris, Rochester, Dennis Day, yours truly, Don Wilson, and our guest, Mr. and Mrs. Ronald Coleman. And now, ladies and gentlemen, let's go out to Jack Benny's home in Beverly Hills, where we find Rochester helping Jack fix up his scrapbook. Uh, Rochester, have you got the scissors? Yeah, I'm cutting something out of the front page of the Pasadena News. It's a picture of you kissing the Queen of the Rose Parade. Oh, yes. See, that is a nice picture of me, isn't it? And some color, too. It would be even nicer if your eyelashes weren't so gray. <laughs> Rochester, my lashes aren't gray. Just that my eyes are so blue, they pick up lint. <laughs> Now, Rochester, I've got enough clippings for my scrapbook. i better start pasting them in. Boss, I looked everywhere, but I can't find the glue. Well, just mix some flour and water. That'll make a good taste. I thought of that, too, but we're all out of flour. We're out of flour? Yeah, yesterday I had hardly enough to finish baking the bread. Well, if we're short of flour, why'd you bake so much bread? I had to. Barbara Stanley got a full extra loaves. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> well, 
why don't you run over to the Coleman's and borrow a cup of... Hey, wait a minute. I haven't seen Mr. Coleman for quite a while. Hand me a cup. I'll go get the flour. Here you are. I'll be right back, Rochester. Hmm. As long as I'm going over, I really should have brought a larger cup. <laughs> oh, well, I guess this cup will be all right. Can it be the trees that fill the breeze with rare... See, there are a lot of people out today. La, 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 Thank you. garbage can shaped like an Oscar. <laughs> you just lift up the head and throw the stuff in. <laughs> when I make my next picture, maybe they'll give me a garbage can. I mean, an Oscar. <laughs> oh, it's you, Mr. Benny. Oh, hello, Sherwood. Is Mr. Coleman in? Uh, yes, yes. He's in the library. Well, could you tell him that I, I, I'd i like to borrow a cup of flour? Oh, there's no need to tell him. I'll give you the flour. Oh, shall I come in? Uh, that won't be necessary. <laughs> I'll sift it to you through the screen door. <laughs> I have the sack hmm. right here on the shelf. Hmm. Oh, by the way, sir, we try to call Mr. Coleman on the phone morning, but I couldn't get him. Did he change his number since I knew him last week? Yes, sir. Three times. <laughs> oh, well, I hope he got the one he liked. Will this be enough flour, Mr. Benny? Yes, yes. I'm just going to use it to make a little paste. You see, I'm working on my scrapbook, and I'm sticking in the many things that have been said about me. You save those? <laughs> Thanks for the shower, Flurwood. I mean, thanks for the flower. You're sir. quite welcome, sir. <laughs> this weather, my tongue froze there. <laughs> well, I'm... Yeah, I must ask the Coleman's to put a gate in the back so I won't have to walk clear out to the sidewalk. Yeah, da dee da dum da dum da dee Hmm. There's Ronnie's long underwear hanging on the line. He's got a gate in those. <laughs> Oh, hello, Mary. Hey, come on in the house, Mary. Well, I haven't got time. I just stopped by to ask you if I could skip rehearsal tomorrow. Skip rehearsal? Why? Well, my sister babe is coming in from Plainfield, and she's trying to forget a broken romance. Oh, no, not Sebastian. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, a new one. Oh. And she was so in love with them, they were all ready to elope. The ladder was up against the house, the window was open, and Babe was so embarrassed. Why? He wasn't home. <laughs> she has a shame. What, what did she do? Well, as long as she was up there, she painted the house. <laughs> Well, when a guy gives you the brush, I guess you must use it. <laughs> well, Mary, Mary, who was that? Um... <laughs> Mary, you know you got to ad lib once in a while. <laughs> Mary, who was this? Uh, who was this new love of hers? Well, I don't know his name, but she said he was making good money. He was a glass blower. A glass blower? Yeah. Whenever Babe went out with her, Mama could always tell when he'd kissed her. Oh. When Babe came home, her head would be three times its size. <laughs> three times its size? That was when he gave her a plain kiss. Once he got fancy and her head looked like a Sudabaker. <laughs> Good old Babe. I knew she could do it. <laughs> hey, Mary, why don't you come in for a little while? Oh, no, no, Jack. I've got to run along now. See you later. Okay. 
She has a nice Cadillac Mary has. I would have gotten one, too, but they didn't make them then. <laughs> Those days, they only have three models. Maxwell, Saxons, and Horses. <laughs> oh, Rochester! Rochester, I got the flour so we, we can make the... You won't need it now, boss. I found some glue. I've already pasted things in the book. Wait a minute. This stuff doesn't seem to be sticking very well. Rochester, is this glue fresh? Fresh? Only two days ago, it was eight to one at Santa Anita. <laughs> How do you like that? I'll get the door. Oh, hello, Dennis. Oh, Mr. Benny, I just came over to tell you the good news. Good news? What? I finally got two tickets for the Rose Bowl game. <laughs> two tickets for the Rose Bowl game? Dennis, that game was played almost three weeks ago. I know, that's why they're so hard to get now. <laughs> Dennis, come in a minute. Now, look, now, let me get this straight. Maybe I'm the one that's confused. Are these tickets for the game that was just played or the one that's going to be played next year? What do you care? I'm not taking you. <laughs> look, Dennis, I can't stand this crazy talk. Now, do me a favor, will you? Go outside and come back in again. Okay. <laughs> oh, hello, Dennis. Howdy, Bob. <laughs> well, that's better. Now you're tight as Moody. Yep, and I've got two tickets to the Rose Bowl game. No, <laughs> Look, kid, what did you come over here for, anyway? Well, I, I wanted you to hear the song I'm going to do on the program. Well, why didn't you say so? Let's hear it, okay, will you? Okay, okay. Oh. Dennis, you sang that beautifully. Yeah, I heard it. Wasn't bad, kid. Phil, I didn't see you. Why didn't you tell me you were here? Well, I didn't want to intrude while you were so enraptured by Mr. Day's musical rendition. <laughs> Phil. Phil, that come out of you? Why? What's so incongruous about that? <laughs> incongruous? Listen to me, Jackson. I'm trying to improve myself in literature and English and, and even in music. Music, too, huh? Well, that I'm glad to hear. Uh, certainly, Jackson, I just came from the library where I picked up this book on music by Grofe. Oh, Ferdy Grofe? No, his brother George. George Grofe? I never heard of him. Well, here's the book right here. I've been reading it all morning. There it is on the cover, George Grofe. That's geography. <laughs> Couldn't laugh. Phil, if you want to learn about Dennis, get away from my scrapbook and Dennis, stop drinking out of that bottle. It's glue. Dennis, it's glue. Oh my goodness. Dennis, speak to me. You better stop it, kid. If you want to get any place in show business, you've got to stop being ridiculous, ludicrous, incompetent, and uncool. Phil, where'd you learn all those words? Well, they're in my contract with Rexall. <laughs> what? Right under the sobriety clause. <laughs> Phil, do you know what sobriety means? No, what? It means that according to that contract, you're not allowed to take a drink. Holy smoke, I've signed my life away. <laughs> Phil, Phil, denatured boy. <laughs> Do me a favor. Pick up Dennis and that geography book and let's... Oh, I have a wonderful contract with my sponsor, Colgate. I don't have to sign anything. We just shake hands. Really? Yeah, but I think he's nearsighted. Your sponsor nearsighted? Why? When my option came up, instead of shaking my hand, he grabbed me by the throat. <laughs> well, if you gave him that Rose Bowl routine, I don't blame him. Now, look, kid. Boss! Boss! What is it, Rochester? I was preparing your lunch, not time. We're all out of butter. We're all out of butter? Well, 
You know what to do. I'm on my way. <laughs> Mr. Coleman, here I come. You're the one we borrow from. <laughs> I'm in the library, Benita. And Benita, who is that at the back door? Mr. Benny's butler, Manchester. <laughs> Milk? No. Sugar? No. Cream? No. Mayonnaise? No. If you ever went on a quiz program, we could spend two glorious weeks in Honolulu. Yes, Benita, I'm getting sharp. <laughs> yeah, but you know, let's not talk about Benny. It only upsets me. Borrowing, borrowing, borrowing. What a neighbor. Well, darling, sometimes he tries to be helpful. During the freezing weather the other night when you worried about our orange trees, Jack did come over and lend you a smudge pot. Yeah, some smudge pot. Three old toupees smoldering in a broken pressure cooker. <laughs> But then what about the snow? Tuesday morning he volunteered to shovel all the snow away from our house, and he did it, too. <laughs> you know, <laughs> that, that was shrewd of me, telling him I dropped a dime on our front lawn. <laughs> Ronnie, you mean you tricked him into doing all that work? Yes, Benita, I must confess, even though it makes me a bit of a stinker, I did. That's <laughs> little things like that that make life worth living. For once, I got even with him for his constant borrowing. Now, Ronnie, you shouldn't be too hard on Jack. After all, it isn't his fault that he's like he is. It, it, it's just fate. What do you mean? Well, you know the famous saying, there but for the grace of God go I. Yes, but what's that got to do with it? Well, people can't help being who they are. It's fate. You could have been born Jack Benny. And he could have been Ronald Coleman. Benita, have you been nipping the sherry again? too tired to think about it now. We're going out to dinner tonight. I'm going to take a little nap. I'll lie down here on the... Oh! Dormy, I should have told you he borrowed the couch, too. <laughs> uh, well, of all... The... Darling, darling, if you want to take your nap, why don't you just sit here in this easy chair? Well... You'd better hurry while it's still here. <laughs> all right. I will. I'll turn out the lights and leave you alone. Yes, thank you. Have a nice nap, dear. Sometimes Benita has the weirdest ideas. <laughs> Imagine her saying it's just fate. That I could have been born, Jack Benny. Whoa, what a nauseating thought. <laughs> oh, this is a comfortable chair. It feels so good to close my eyes. Ronnie, you could have been born Jack Benny. You could have been Jack Benny. You could be Jack Benny. You could be Jack Benny. You could be Jack Benny. Oh, boss! Boss! Mr. Benny! What is it, Rochester? Today! Today's payday! Some of your cats are waiting in the living room for their money. Hmm. <laughs> I might as well go in. Uh, help me on with my shoes, Rochester. Why, you'll just have to take them off again when you pay them. <laughs> yeah, I guess you're right. You know, Rochester, I'm a pretty lucky man. My cast has been wonderful to me. They're always on time, 
They work hard, they try their best, and always give great performances. I wish there was something I could do to show my gratitude. Why don't you give them a raise? I will not. Better not keep them waiting. Can it be the trees, the trees, the trees, with rare and magic perfume? Oh, no, it isn't. Why, hello, Kit. Hello, hello Jack. Well, I understand you're all here for your salary. Here's yours, Mary. Oh, thanks, Jack. Don. Thanks, Jack. Dennis. Whoop. Dropped it. Did you hear the latest news about Don? He's got another show now. Well, congratulations, Don. What program is it? Well, it's the Alan Young show, Jack. We started last week. Alan Young, eh? He's a clever comedian. How does it feel having two shows? So wonderful. And the nice thing about it is that one of my bosses is young. <laughs> like that, and... Ouch! Dennis, why are you biting my leg? You're standing on my salary. <laughs> Since you're all here, I want to invite you to my birthday party on February the 14th. Say, that's right, Jack. Next month is your birthday. Yep. Time sure flies. One more month, and I won't be 39 anymore. 39? Where were you born? On a slow boat to China? <laughs> Slow boat to China. Slow boat to China. <laughs> you, you better watch it, sister, or you'll be on a fast bus to the Maycomb. <laughs> Jack. By the way, I meant to tell you I just got another letter from my mother. Really? And what does the command decision of your father's life have to say? <laughs> oh, nothing much, except that the dentist held a convention in Plainfield, and my sister babe was voted Miss Lower Plate Wobble of 1949. My good old babe. I knew she could do it. <laughs> oh, uh, by the way, Jack, what are you planning to do on the program next week? Well, I want to do a Shakespearean sketch. And I'm going to try and get Ronald Coleman as a guest star. I'd even offered him a hundred dollars. A hundred dollars? Why, you can't get Ronald Coleman to do Shakespeare for that? Done. He's such a big ham, he'll jump at the chance. <laughs> yes, Ronald. You could have been Jack Benny. And Jack Benny could have been born Ronald Coleman. Jack could have been Ronald Coleman. <laughs> Are you? I'm in the library, Benita. <laughs> oh, yes. You always are. What are you doing, Ronnie? I'm looking at the list of nominees for the Academy Award. My name is Nanad. But, darling, you didn't make a picture this year. How can you expect to win anything? I thought they might give me some sort of an award for living next to Benny. <laughs> Gad, how I despise that blue-eyed baboon. <laughs> Darling, don't pick on his appearance. Why not? After all, Benny's eyes aren't really blue. I happen to know that he dyes them. <laughs> now, we get him, dear. Remember what happens to your blood pressure when you think of Benny. I can't help thinking of that jerk, always borrowing eggs, milk, cream, butter. Butter. <laughs> Doesn't he have anything of his own? What does he keep in his ice box? A film of the horn blows at midnight. Oh, yes. If I ever made a picture like that, I'd ask Clancy to lower the boom. Oh, Ronnie, forget Jack. And let's talk about something else. I haven't told you before, but I'm planning a hunting trip for us up in the High Sierras. In the High Sierras? Or are we going to hunt bear? 
No, we'll be wearing your long underwear. <laughs> one. <laughs> That's not funny, Benita. Anyway, I don't want to go hunting. I'd rather go to the races at Santa Anita. <laughs> Benita. Oh, Ronnie, you're so cute. Come here, darling. Oh, don't, dear. Don't. <laughs> you're sickly, Greg. Oh, stop being so dignified. It's only us. <laughs> you know, darling... I'm a lucky man, having such a beautiful wife. Come here, Benita. Let me kiss you. Oh, Ronnie, that was wonderful. Kiss <laughs> me again. Ronnie, Ronnie, Ronnie. Five minutes. Oh, well, where did he go? Where did Benny go? Benny? Jack wasn't here. Oh, he wasn't, eh? Now, Benita, I distinctly saw you kiss him. Me? Kiss Jack Benny? Have you gone out of... Oh, wait a minute. You must have dreamed it. Huh? Oh, yes, yes, yes. I guess I did. Well, that settles it. We'll have to move. Move? <laughs> I don't mind Benny borrowing everything I've got. And I don't mind Benny ruining my life. But when he starts to louse up my dreams, that's too much, my girl. Too much. Thanks, Ronnie and Benita, and good night, everybody. each year. You even have the right to approve of the script. Now, what else could you possibly want? Money. <laughs> Don, Don, there are things much more important than money. Well, uh, maybe so, Don. Don, Don but, no, wait a minute. You place too much importance on money. Don't you realize you can't take it with you? I know, but I'd like to finger a little of it while I'm here. <laughs> Oh. Well, Don, everything else in the contract is satisfactory, isn't it? Well, everything except Clause 11. Clause 11? Yes. That's the one that says I'm not allowed to eat during the broadcast. Oh. Well, Don, I had that clause put in because of what happened a couple of weeks ago when you were eating a hamburger during the first part of the show. So what if I ate a hamburger? I did my commercial all right, didn't I? Yes, but your pear-shaped tones came out with onions on them. <laughs> So the no, the no eating clause stays in. Well, that's not important. That's not important. But what about the money? Now, I made my final offer. You don't have to sign it now. I'll go out and leave you alone so you can think it over all by yourself. I don't know. Sometimes John can be so stubborn that hey, I... Hey, boss! Boss! What is it, Rochester? Has he signed it yet? Not yet. You want me to heat up the brand and iron? <laughs> oh, stop being silly. Anyway, I'm using the hunger treatment on him. Uh, tell me, Rochester, were there any calls while I was in conference? Yeah, it was Barbara Stanley called. She's having a big party Saturday night, and she wants you to be there. Good, good. Did she say white tie or black tie? White coat, you're going to park cars. <laughs> hmm. Well, Rochester...
Doctor, did you mention to Miss Stanwyck that I'd be glad to play my violin for her guest? Oh, I always do. But she said they were going to have Yasha Heifetz for that. Oh. Well, they probably would have had me, but Yasha can't park cars. <laughs> anyway, Rochester, I... Uh... Hello. Hello. Ah, oh, poor Polly. You still haven't gotten over your cold. Polly got a cold. <laughs> Gesundheit. You know, Rochester, it's your fault that Polly has this cold. You never should have let her out of the house last week. But, boss, how was I to know she'd try to hatch a snowball? <laughs> Snowball, have a snowball. <laughs> See, it's amazing. She got a cold in the head from that. <laughs> well, I think I'll go back in the den and see if Don has made up his mind yet. Well, Don, have you decided to sign the contract yet at the salary I offered you? No, Jack, and I want to tell you something. Never in my life have I seen anyone quibble over such trivial amounts as you do. Your parsimony absolutely revolts me. I've got to tell you, Jack, that you are without a doubt the cheapest, most miserly man I ever met. What? Don, if you hate me, don't laugh like that. Don, never have I been... Never have I been hurt so by a friend. Now, how in the world can you say a thing like that about me? Because it's true. That's no excuse. <laughs> Imagine talking like that about me. Not only have we been business associates, but I've been the best friend you've ever had. I've done more for you than anyone else. Just a minute, Jack. What have you ever done for me? Name one thing. All right, I will. How about during the war when you weren't getting enough food? Didn't I sell you Rochester's ration book? <laughs> didn't I? Jack, that ration book was for shoes. That didn't stop you. You ate them anyway. <laughs> and another thing. Rochester, will you answer the door? I'm getting it, boss. Mm, they're sure going after it hot and heavy. Hello, Rochester. Oh, hello, Miss Livingston. Come on in. The boss is in the den with Mr. Wilson. Uh, business or pleasure? Business for Mr. Wilson, pleasure for Mr. Benny. <laughs> oh, then they must be discussing Don's new contract. Yes, ma'am, and they've been in there for over five hours. Gee, Don must be tough. I remember when Dennis came over to talk about his new contract, he was out in just 20 minutes. Yes, lawyer sprung him with a writ of habeas corpus. <laughs> Oh, Rochester. Well, anyway, maybe Mr. Wilson will be out in a few minutes. I doubt it. It's hard to spring that much corpus. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll just wait here for Jack. Wait for Jack. Wait for Jack. Oh, hello, Polly. Polly want a cracker? Polly want a Kleenex. <laughs> Well, don't worry, Polly. You'll be better in a few days. Oh, hello, Jack. I wanted to... Just, uh, just a minute, Mary. Now, what were you saying, Mary? Uh, nothing. Uh, may I say hello to Don now, or are visiting hours over? Well, Mary, I only locked the door so that no one could disturb Don while he's thinking. How are you? Oh, fine, Jack, fine. Okay. I just did a little shopping. I bought myself a new evening gown. A new evening gown, huh? What color? Well, it isn't a solid color. It's something brand new in the latest style out here in California. It's pure white with yellow spots. White with yellow spots? Uh -huh. It represents a Nord tree peeping through a snowdrift. <laughs> That's orange. Orange. <laughs> oh. oh, but you know, Jack, it's really a beautiful gown. And it has such a low neckline. See, then the dresser must be skimpier than it ever. Last season's necklines were so low. See, I imagine next year... Stop that... thinking about it, Jack. Your little blue eyes are popping out. Yeah. By the way, Mary, how come you bought a new evening gown? Oh, for Barbara Stanwyck's party Saturday night. Barbara Stanwyck is having a party? Yes, a real swank affair. Everybody will be there. 
Really? Yes, Barbara told me they were having so many guests, they even hired a man to park cars. No kidding. Don't act innocent. I was the one who recommended you. <laughs> recommended you, recommended you, yeah. Oh, stop imitating Ronald Coleman. All right, all right. Now, excuse me, Mary. I want to go in the den and talk to Don for a minute. Well, have you signed the contract yet, Don? No, Jack, not yet. Well, I'll go out again let you think about it some more. No, I can't think. I've been locked here in here since early morning. I haven't eaten for hours. I'm starved. Hungry? Well, look, Don. All you have to do is sign the contract and go out for lunch and get a nice thick steak. Uh, steak? Yes. <laughs> thick, juicy sirloin covered with mushrooms. Jack, please. <laughs> and on the side, a big baked Idaho potato dripping with butter. Please, Jack. And nestling all around the lovely steak will be golden brown French fried onions. And for dessert, for dessert, you can have pie a la mode. Covered with everything. Thomas! Thomas! Well, look, Don. I'll leave you here in the den to think it over. I'll be back soon. What about it, boss? Have you signed yet? Not yet. He's sure tough this time. Yeah, look, Rochester, go in the kitchen, put some coffee on, start frying some bacon, and blow the fumes toward the den. <laughs> oh, boss, you rascal, you! <laughs> Never mind, just go do it. And make a hamburger for me. I want to eat it in front of you. Say, Mary, would you... Oh, hello, Dennis. Hello, Mr. Benny. I just got back in town a few minutes ago. Yes, Jack. Dan Dennis was just telling me that he was up at Big Bear for the winter sports. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, I went up there with my mother and father. First, my father didn't want to go, but my mother made him. Why? Oh, I thought your mother and father were mad at each other. Why would she make him go? She heard the snow up there was six feet deep. My father's only five feet four. <laughs> oh, my goodness. What happened to your father? Nothing. He was wearing elevator shoes. <laughs> now, Dana, stop making up those crazy things. Okay. Kid. Say, Dennis, while you were up in the snow, did you do any tobogganing? Yeah, I went down the toboggan slide four times and it was awful. What people see in that ride, I'll never know. Why? What happened? I got my face all cut up and my knees scraped, too. Well, Dennis, maybe you didn't know how to steer your sled. Oh, sled! <laughs> Dennis, you, meant, you mean you went down the toboggan slide without a sled? Yeah, the On other, your stomach? The other side hurt from ice skating. <laughs> oh, for heaven's sake. Now, look, what'd you come over here for anyway? Tell you the song I picked for Sunday show. Oh. It's here all day. And I'm going to sing it at Barbara's sandwich party on Saturday night, too. Oh, are you going to entertain at Barbara's party, Dennis? Oh, no, I'm just a guest. The real entertainer will be Yasha Heifetz. Yasha Heifetz. A lot of help he'll be at the party. I bet he hasn't even got a driver's license. <laughs> will I see you at the party, Mr. Benny? You sure will, kid. He'll be wearing top hat, white coat, and flashlight. Yeah. Gee, this is amazing. For once, I don't understand them. <laughs> <laughs> Never mind, Dennis. Just let me hear your song. Yes, sir. Oh, just a second, Dennis. Um, what time is it, Jack? It's ten to three, Mary. Why? Well, I've got an appointment at my dentist's office to have my teeth cleaned, and I don't want to be late. You go to a dentist, just have your teeth cleaned? Why don't you do what I do? Well, I tried it, Jack, but I can't stand the taste of soy law. <laughs> Mary, go ahead and sing, will you, kid? Okay. Dennis, that was a wonderful song, but when you do it on the program, you ought to sing the verse a little faster so that you can retard the second chorus... And then the orchestra can come to a crescendo when... He left, Jack. Oh. <laughs> and I think I'd better go, too. I don't want to be late for my dental appointment. All right. Say, look, Mary, I've got nothing to do till dinner. Would you like me to drive you over? Oh, sure. My appointment won't take long. Good. Then maybe we can take in a movie, too. Uh, but, Jack, what about Don Wilson and his contract? Oh, yes. Oh, Rochester! Rochester! Yes, sir? Here's the key. When Mr. Wilson starts screaming for food, throw him a fountain pen. Come on, Mary, let's go. Mary, which
Which office is your dentist in? Oh, he's way down at the end of the hall. Oh. Say, Mary, look at those signs in the office on the office doors. Dr. Larson, gone to the inauguration. Dr. Williamson, gone to the inauguration. Dr. Leroy, gone to the inauguration. Say, Mary, maybe your doctor won't be in. Oh, yes, he will. He's a Republican. <laughs> oh. Uh, there's my dentist's office right across the hall. Say, Mary, as long as I'm here, I think I'll have the dentist look at my teeth, too. I haven't had them checked in a long time. Oh, that's a good idea. May I help you people? Uh, yes, nurse. I have an appointment with Dr. Leland. I'm Mary Livingston. Oh, you're just in time. Go right in the first office on your left. Thank you. Uh, miss, while I'm here, uh, I want to find out about my teeth. Yes, sir. When did you leave them? <laughs> No, no, I'd like Dr. Leland to examine them. Well, Dr. Leland has no appointments open. However, Dr. Nelson has a cancellation. I'm sure he can take you. Good, good. I'll uh, have to get some information first. Your name? Jack Benny. Occupation? Violinist. <laughs> really? Concert or stage? A parking lot. I mean, really. <laughs> I'm on, uh, I'm on radio now. Your age, please. Well, uh, how old, uh, would you get me to be? Twenty-eight. Well, I'm, I'm really a little older than that. I, uh, uh, guess again. Fifty-four. <laughs> For your information, I happen to be thirty-nine. Oh. Well, Mr. Benny, the doctor's office is through the door over there. You may go right in. Thank you. Oh, doctor. Doctor. How do you do? <laughs> hmm. Look, uh... Look, doctor, hey, I... don't tell me. You have a toothache. No, no, no. I only want you to... Just sit down and leave the rest to me. But, Doctor, all I want is... Doctor, why are you strapping me in the chair? Well, the last time I pulled a tooth, I yanked you hard and threw the patient out the window. (laughs) Oh, my goodness, did his tooth come out? All of me hit a fire plug. (laughs) Now, look, Doctor, I don't need an extraction. All I want you to do is examine my teeth. Eh, Very well, very well. Open your mouth, please. Ah... Wider. Ah, ah. Wider, so I can look all the way back. Ah, ah. Well, I can see everything now. (laughs) Doctor. Doctor, do you have to... Stop talking, you're biting my ankle. (laughs) I, uh... I hope you'll forgive me, but I'd like to make a complete examination. Oh, well, are my teeth bad? No, but you better do something about that appendix. <laughs> appendix? Uh, now, just hold still, and I'll complete the examination. Oh, excuse me. Yes? Oh, doctor, Don Amici just called, and he wants to know if you can clean his teeth this afternoon. Oh, does it have to be done this afternoon? Yes. Tonight he's going to a masquerade, and he wants to go with the lighthouse. <laughs> Well, all right. Tell Mr. Amici to come in this afternoon and lay out my dark glasses. Yes, sir. Oh, and by the way, nurse, send in my technician. I have to make an x-ray. Yes, doctor. Now, before my technician comes in, I just want to make one final check. Open your mouth. Ah. Doctor. Doctor, why are you spinning my pivot tools? I used to be a disc jockey. A disc jockey? And now I'd like to pull this next tooth for Sam, George, Milk, Tack, and all the boys at Hickey's Bar. And happy birthday to Jeanette. Now cut that off. Look, I just came here for an examination. Is that sent for me, doctor? Yes, I have a patient here who requires an x-ray. Oh, very well. You operate the camera and I'll swing the chair around so you'll get a good picture. Wait a minute. This x-ray man here, does he take good pictures? Who does it? 
Uh, he's made several dental pictures. Perhaps you've seen them. They played all the neighborhood theaters. Dental pictures? Yes. Yeah. Sorry, wrong molar, mother wore braces, and that latest one was Jane Wyman, Johnny by Custis. <laughs> Now, look, Doctor, I haven't got all day. If your man is going to take this x-ray, let him take it. Well, I'm going to take the picture. He's going to direct it. What? Now, tilt your head back, Mr. Benny, and I'm Q. Open your mouth, raise your tongue, press it over toward your right cheek, smile. Now, wait a minute. What's going on right. here? Camera, roll them. Doctor, don't move. We're trying for an Academy Award. <laughs> Look, all I wanted was a simple examination. That's all I wanted. I had the picture, Doctor. I'll have it developed in a minute. Good. Mr. Benny, while we're waiting, just sit back and relax. Thank goodness. Now, Doctor? Yes, now. She'll be coming round the mountain when she comes. She'll be coming round the mountain when she comes. What is this, anyway? She'll be coming round the mountain. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute! Doctor, what is this? Yeah, our floor show, we can't afford magazines. <laughs> well, look. Now, look, make her keep quiet. Here are the results of the x-ray, Doctor. Yeah, let me see. Oh, yes. A wonderful picture. It's too bad he wasn't bleeding. We could have got it in Technicolor. <laughs> Doctor, what does it show? Yeah, just a moment, just a moment. Hmm. According to this x-ray, you have an abscess. An abscess? Yes, it's sort of a pocket. Gee. Oh, it's nothing to be alarmed about. Finding a little pocket under a tooth is very common. Although yours is unusual. Why? It has money in it. <laughs> Look, doctor, if you think I'm going to stay in this now, chair... Now, now, settle down. It'll only take a minute. A nurse, grab the patient by the hair and hold his head back. Yes, doctor. Oh! Well, then grab him by the ear. <laughs> Doctor, I only came in here for an examination. Hey, Doctor, Doctor, I want to have a word with you. Hey, excuse me, it's my technician. Really? Are you sure? Yeah. Oh, then you'd better help me. Nurse, hand me my forceps. Forceps. Novocaine. Novocaine. Needle. Needle. Swab. Swab. Burrs. Burrs. Straight chisel. Straight chisel. Saliva ejector. Saliva ejector. Drill. Drill. Coat. Coat. Hat. Hat. Umbrella. Umbrella. Doctor. Doctor, what are you doing? Our lease is up. We're moving. (laughs) What? Come on, nurse. Doctor. Doctor, let me out of this chair. Doctor Nelson. Lucky Strike program starring Jack Benny with Mary Livingston, Phil Harris, Rochester, Don Wilson, and yours truly, Dennis Day. I have to open the program this week because last week Mr. Benny locked Don Wilson in the den and won't let him out till he signs his new contract. So let's go out to Jack Benny's house in Beverly Hills where we... Wait a minute. Who's that coming up the walk? Gee, it's me. (laughs) Hello, Rochester. Oh, hello, Mr. Day. Come on in. Thanks. Hey, Rochester, is Don Wilson still locked in the den? Yeah, Mr. Day won't let him out till he signs the contract. Gee, I'll never forget the time I wouldn't sign my contract and he locked me in a room for almost two years. He did? Yeah, then he went around telling everybody I was in the Navy. <laughs> oh, well, how'd you finally escape from the room? Who got you out? MacArthur. <laughs> well, I'll tell Mr. Benny you're here. He's in the den talking to Mr. Wilson. What is it, Rochester? Dennis Day is here. Uh, tell him to wait. I'll be out in a minute. Now, look, Don. Don, we've gone over this contract <laughs> ten times a day for a whole week, and still you won't sign it. Now, what is it you want? Water. Water. <laughs> Dude, 
me a glass of water. I'm so thirsty. Then why are you stubborn? All you have to do is sign the contract. But no, you just stand there with your back to me. Now, Don, turn around. I want you to face me. Sure. You know that when I look into your big blue eyes, I'm like putty in your hands. <laughs> well, that's ridiculous, Don. What would I do with 290 pounds of putty? <laughs> But, Jack, I don't weigh 290 pounds anymore. You starved me for a week. Say, Don, you do look as though you lost weight. Why don't you weigh yourself? I can't. I put my last penny in your peanut machine. (laughs) Oh. That salt is murder. Water! 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 You'll get it as soon as you sign the contract. I'll see you later. But, Jack, I have been on the program for two weeks. What are you going to tell the sponsor? I've already told him, Don, and he's very happy. He thinks you're in Kentucky picking tobacco. (laughs) Did he believe it? He must have. He sent you an old straw hat. (laughs) I'll see you later, Don. What a stubborn guy. Oh, hello, Dennis. Goodbye. Goodbye? What do you mean, goodbye? When you came in singing, I thought I was out of a job. Now, that's silly, Dennis. You and I work so well together. Why, I wouldn't have such a good program without you. Well, that's funny. I have a wonderful program without you. (laughs) Yeah, I guess you're right. And you know, Dennis... Oh, boss, boss! What is it, Rochester? It's Polly again. Her cold seems to be getting worse. Oh, my poor parrot. Rochester, didn't you do anything for her? Yeah, all morning I've been giving her four-way cold tablets. What happened? She laid a square egg. <laughs> How could she do that? It wasn't easy. <laughs> well, let's go in and take a look at her. Hello, Polly. Polly got a cold. Polly got a cold. <whistles> <laughs> <laughs> Poor Polly. Uh, Polly want a cracker? Polly want to die. <laughs> uh, a gesund. Gesund? Yeah, we don't mention height in this house. <laughs> Gee, poor Polly has such a bad cold. <laughs> <laughs> Polly, not with my tie. <laughs> Rochester, I think I'll rub some camphorated oil on her chest. If you want to do that, boss, you'll have to take off her mustard plaster first. Oh, yes. Come here, Polly. Daddy wants to take that mustard plaster off your chest. Hold still. Hold still. Now, don't be nervous. Now, Polly, stop carrying on. Daddy didn't hurt you. I think you did, Mr. Benny. Look at all those feathers stuck to the mustard plaster. Oh, yes. I'm sorry, Polly. I didn't know your feathers would stick to it. I'll get it, Rochester. Oh, hello, Mary. Come on in. Oh, I'm sorry, Jack. You're getting dressed to go out? No, why? You've got your toupee in your hand. That's a mustard plaster. (laughs) Polly's feathers are stuck on it. Well, it looks better than the thing you wore last night. Last night? What a toupee. The part went from ear to ear. Mary, it just happened that someone yelled, Hey, Jack, and I turned my head too fast. <laughs> now, come on in. Say, Jack. What? I just talked to my sister Babe over the phone, and she feels awful. She's heartbroken. Your sister Babe? Why? Tyrone Power got married. Well, what's she heartbroken about? Your sister Babe doesn't even know Tyrone Power. Well, that's why she's so upset. For two years, she's been writing him love letters signed Linda Christian, and look what happened. <laughs> well, your sister ought to get wise to herself. I remember the time she wrote a letter to Artie Shaw, and it wasn't even her turn yet. <laughs> what a girl. Well, Jack, you can't blame Babe. After all, she's not getting any younger, and she'd like to get married. I know. And she's really trying. She's been going to a beauty parlor every day for the past month. Well, is it doing any good? I don't think so. (laughs) Yesterday when she was out in the snow, a plane flew over and dropped her a bale of hay. (laughs) (laughs) 
<laughs> a good old babe. I knew she could get it. <laughs> Say, Mary, let's go into the library. I want to see how Polly's getting along. Oh, hello, Dennis. Hello, Mary. Dennis, where's Polly? She's up on the chandelier. What? <laughs> my son, my son. Oh, for... Polly, get off of there. That's a light bulb. I'm not trying to hatch a light bulb. <laughs> Polly, didn't your mother ever tell you about the people and the bees? Now, come down, Daddy, and stop flying around. What you need is rest. Get back in your cage and go to sleep. You want me to sing to her, Mr. Benny? Sing to her? Yeah, I just recorded a lullaby for R.C.A. Victor, and I thought you and Polly might like to hear it. Oh, yes, yeah. yes. Yeah. Well, go ahead, kid. Go ahead. <laughs> Polly, stop applauding and go back to sleep. Dennis, that was a wonderful song, and you sang it beautifully. Oh, stop repeating yourself. <laughs> what? You said the same thing to Kenny Baker 12 years ago. <laughs> well, look, if you don't want me to compliment you anymore, why, just... Mary, answer the phone, will you? Okay. Hello? Mr. Benny's residence. Mary, the upstairs maid speaking. <laughs> Mary. Who's calling, please? Hiya, Libby. You one little warm spot that's left in California. <laughs> oh, hello, Phil. When did you get back from Washington? Holy smoke, is that where I was? <laughs> Phil, you know where you were. Yeah, yeah. Hey, let me talk to Jeannie with the light green money. <laughs> <laughs> Jack, it's Phil. He wants to talk to you. Oh. Well, hello, Phil. When did you get back? I blew into town Friday. What train? No train, just blew in. <laughs> it hasn't been that windy. Say, <laughs> hey, Phil. Phil, how'd you enjoy yourself at the inaugural ball? Oh, I had a wonderful time. Say, Jackson, did you see the picture in the paper of Alice with President Truman? Yes, yes, I did. Why didn't the president pose with you? I'm from the South, son. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Hey, but the inaugural ball was great, Jackson. You know, it's amazing how them dignified senators and congressmen let themselves go at a dance. They do the latest steps. I even saw Senator Pepper doing the rumble. The rumble? Yeah, you know that Pepper ain't a bad shaker. <laughs> oh, 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 Harris, your wit is exceeded only by your natural beauty. <laughs> beauty? Phil... Bill. Buttons and booze. <laughs> what else? What else did you do on the trip? What else? Didn't you hear me? I was on Fred Allen's program. No, I. Wait a minute, Phil. You you were on Fred Allen's program? Yeah. Well, you and Fred should make a wonderful combination: ham hocks and vinegar puss. <laughs> Brother, what a dull time you must have. All right, hold it, Jackson. Calm down, Dad. Right. Wait a minute. That Allen's a pretty clever comedian. He gets big laughs. Well, it's easy to get laughs if you do what he does. He tells a joke, lifts up the bag under his right eye, and there's a life-size picture of Milton Burrow. <laughs> Look, Phil, outside of appearing with radio's only sponsored post-nasal drip, how did you enjoy New York? Oh, it was exciting. And Jackson... You should have seen Manhattan. It's amazing. Why? They got snow just like here. <laughs> I know, Phil. I know. We ship our big flakes east. <laughs> each, uh, each one of Sam's sun kiss down there. <laughs> Incidentally, Phil, my picture opened in New York yesterday. Did you see the ads for it? It's called The Lucky Stiff. It's a comedy mystery. The Lucky Stiff? Are you in it? No, no, it stars Dorothy L'Amour, Brian Dunleavy, and Claire Trevor. I happen to be the producer. I'm the one who put up the money. You put up the what? The money. Now, Phil. 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 Hello? Who are you? I'm the bartender in this joint. Your friend fainted. <laughs> Oh, that's a shame. If you like, I'll talk to you until the Nicholas you stop. <laughs> Never mind. He calls me. Goodbye. What if I'll... Say, Mary. Mary, I've got to go to a meeting pretty soon, a very important meeting, so why don't you... 
Uh-oh. I guess Don Wilson wants me. Jack, for heaven's sake, have you still got Don locked in the den? Mary, it's his own fault. All he has to do is sign the contract, and he's a free man. Now, isn't that simple? Yes, Warden. <laughs> Never mind. Gee, Mr. Benny, why don't you let him out? I'm not going to let him out until he signs the contract. And that reminds me, Dennis. What? In a couple of weeks, uh, you come up for a new contract. Anchors away, my boys, anchors away. Dennis. Farewell to college, joys we sail at break of day. Dennis, that's enough. <laughs> and don't be funny. Well, i got to run along now. Why, what's your hurry? Well, I've got to go to Wilshire Boulevard and get on a bus and ride a block, and then I get on another bus and ride a block, and then I get on another bus and ride a block, and then I get on another Wait a bus minute. and... Wait a minute. Why do you have to get on all those buses? Well, yesterday I left my hat on one of them. <laughs> well, bon voyage. What a kid. Say, Mary, uh, I've got to go to the meeting now. Okay, I'll walk as far as the corner with you. Oh, Rochester! Yes, boss! Uh, I'm going to my meeting now, and I may not be home for dinner. Well, boss, as long as you're going to be out, can I have the night off? But, Rochester, who's going to stay with Polly? Polly Smiley, i got a date! <laughs> oh, uh, a new girl, eh? Yeah, and say, boss, could you advance me, say, about $50? $50? Who do you think I am, Rockefeller or Vanderbilt? No, but she thinks I'm Amos or Andy. <laughs> well, here's five bucks and tell her you're the kingfish. <laughs> Come on, Mary, let's go. Gee, you know, Mary, the, gee, the weather's getting warmer out. Yeah. Well, I'm home in time for dinner. Now, where's my key? Oh, darn it, I dropped a quarter. Now, where did it... How do you like that? It rolled down a crack in the cement. I wonder if I can get it. <clears throat> no, it's too far down. Well, I know what to do. with you again next Sunday at the same time, same station. And we're going to have a very unusual program with Claudette Colbert and Vincent Price as our special guests. Gee, what that's going to cost. <laughs> what are you laughing at? Who's laughing? I'm hysterical. <laughs> Strike program starring Jack Benny with Phil Harris, Rochester's Dennis Day, Don Wilson, and yours truly, Mary Livingston. And ladies and gentlemen, today is my turn to make the opening announcement because Jack still has Don Wilson locked in his den, and he intends to keep him there till Don signs his new contract. As we look in on Jack's home, we find him in Rochester discussing the situation. Boss, I don't like to butt into your affairs, but I think that if you won't let Mr. Wilson go, you ought to at least give him a little food. He's lost so much weight, his face is getting awful thin. It is? Yeah, this morning I peeked in at him through the keyhole and saw both his eyes peeking back. <laughs> 
Look, Rochester, I'll let Mr. Wilson out when he signs the contract and not before. But, boss, he's desperate for food. You know that moose head hanging over the piano? Don't tell me he ate the moose head. No, the piano! <laughs> what? And with those keys sticking out of his mouth, he looks like Don Amici. <laughs> Rochester, stop making up such silly things. I'll get it. Oh, hello, kids. Hello, hello Jack. Jack. Hello, Jackson. Well, this is a coincidence, all three of you coming at the same time. Well, Jack, it's no coincidence. We're over here to make a protest. A protest? Yes, just because Don won't sign his contract, you lock him up like a common criminal. It's awful. It's humiliating. It's insulting to his dignity. Oh, it is, eh? What have you got to say about it, Dennis? Nothing. Tenors are a dime a dozen. <laughs> well, look, kids, I don't think this is any of your business. I happen to be the boss of my program, and I'll run things the way I want to. Well, we're making it our business. Oh, you are, eh? Let me tell you something. A business is like a ship, and whether it sinks or floats depends upon the captain. And you know what it is when the crew revolts against the captain. Yeah, it's matinee. That's mutiny! <laughs> matinee. I'm ashamed of all of you, but you the most, Mary. Imagine you being the ringleader after all I've done for you. Took you from nothing, put you on the radio, and made a big star out of you. Well, some big star. If I didn't double at the Burbank Theater, I'd starve to death. <laughs> the, uh, the Burbank Theater? Gee, ball of fire, Livingston. <laughs> Boy, now listen, all of you. Now listen, my business dealings with Don Wilson don't concern you. The only things you should be interested in are your own contract. Well, I got a beef on that, Jackson. Look at the way you got me to sign my last contract. What are you talking about? You signed it in five minutes. I know, but look at the way you tortured me. You shoved a billiard ball in my mouth and locked me in a room with a bottle of bourbon. <laughs> Gee, Phil, what did you do? I had to knock out my front teeth. To get the ball out? No, to get the bourbon in. <laughs> now, look, look, kid. You're better off than I am, Phil. Mr. Benny signed me to the longest-term contract in radio. How long is your contract with Jackson, kid? I don't know, but when I signed it, he slipped a ring on my finger and said, Till death do us part. <laughs> Why, you kids should be happy you're working for me. There's something to be proud of. Well, I still think it's humiliating. Particularly that clause you have in my contact saying that if anything terrible happens to my sister, Babe, you have the right to use it on your program. Well, Mary... Uh... Well, Babe wrote me and said she's fed up with it, all those terrible things you say about her, like she's modeling harnesses, or she was voted Miss Lower Plate Wobble, or... A plain floor and uh, dropped a veil of hay. You gotta stop that, Jack. Okay. By the way, how are things going with your sister, babe? Oh, fine. She meets gorgeous George at the Olympic Wednesday. <laughs> uh, did you write that down, Rochester? Got it! Good. <laughs> Good. Yeah. Jack. Jack, there's Don rattling at the door. He must be starved. Yeah, Jack, unlock that door so we can talk to him. I will not. Jack, open that door. We want to talk to Don. Oh, all right. Anyway, we'll talk you down. Talk you down. Well, Don, are you going to sign that contract? I won't. I won't. <laughs> Who's there with you? Who are those people? Well, uh, Don, uh, don't you recognize us? I'm Mary, and there's Phil and Dennis. I don't know these people. Get them out of here, Jack. They're just here to torture me. Now, look, Don. Uh, Don, I'm your friend, Mary Livingston. Oh, yes, Mary. Mary, please talk to Jack about my contract. Dennis, Dennis, tell Jack to give me a fair deal. Tell him how lousy he is. Oh, he knows that. <laughs> Quiet, kid. You better sign that contract, Don. Now, why don't you listen to reason and then... Now, I'll give you that raise you were holding out for. Now, sign the contract and go home. Okay, okay. Give me the pen. I'll sign. I'll sign. There. I did it. I did it. I'm free. I'm free. Do you hear me? Free! <laughs> Don, look out for the window. Oh, my goodness, he jumped. I'm free! I'm free! I'm free! <laughs> I'm free! <laughs> Gee, it's... Gee, it's too... It's too bad he ran away so fast. I was going to give him a new suit and a $5 bill. <laughs> <laughs> now, look, kids... I hope you all learned something from this. Now that I let Don out, I don't want to have trouble with anyone else. From now on, when we have rehearsals, be on time, pay attention to your job, and take direction from me, and there'll be no trouble. Direction from you? Certainly. I've been in radio for 17 years, and I know how things should be done. That's why I'm so much in demand. In demand? Wait a minute, Dad. 
You told me you were going to be on the Ford Theater last Friday night, so I tuned in and heard Claudette Colbert and Vincent Price. You weren't even on. Well, Phil, they begged me, but at the last minute, I couldn't make it. Begged you? That isn't what Claudette told me. Mary, we're not discussing that now. What did Claudette tell you, Mary? Mary, if you say one word, I'm leaving the room. I don't want to hear this silly talk. I don't care. I'm going to tell him. All right, then. I'm going out. <laughs> Come on, Livy, tell us. Well, here's what happened. Last week, when Jack heard that Claudette Colbert was going to be on the fourth theater program... Yeah, yeah. He immediately be called up by Sue Marshall, the director of the show, and try to get on it, too. He couldn't wait to get to the phone and call Mr. Marshall. Hello, Kenyon and Eckhart, radio advertising agency. Uh, may I speak to Mr. Markle, please? Who's calling? Uh, Jack Benny. What's your hooper? <laughs> uh, 28.9. Oh, then Mr. Markle will talk to you. Thank you. Hello? Oh, hello, Mr. Markle. Hello. Uh, Mr. Markle, uh, this is Jack Benny. Yes, Mr. Benny, what can I do for you? Well, I understand that Claudette Colbert and Vincent Price are appearing on your Ford Theater program. That's right. Well, I thought perhaps you might like to use me instead of Vincent Price. <laughs> Mr. Benny, didn't you do uh, personal appearances in Europe last summer? Yes, yes, I did. And uh, you just finished producing a picture called The Lucky Stiff? Uh-huh. And uh, didn't you just sell your program to CBS? Yes, yes, that's right. Well, please let somebody else make a buck, will you? <laughs> Mr. Markle, Mr. Markle, it, it, it's not a question of money. It's a matter of proper casting. Now, does Miss Colbert know that you have Vincent Price? She picked him. Oh. <laughs> well, uh, don't you think it would be better if we... No. <laughs> now, wait a minute. Mr. Markle, if you give me the job, I can save you money. You can? Yes, I can not only act, but I can play in the orchestra. You see, I'm also a violinist. So you see, by doing two jobs, two jobs for the same salary, I'll be beating Vincent's price. <laughs> hey, that was a good one. <laughs> Mr. Marco. Mr. Marco. Just a moment, please. I'm cutting my wrists. <laughs> I'll wait. I mean, wait a minute. <laughs> Look, there's no need, there's no need for bloodshed. Now, Mr. Markle, if you don't mind, I'll call Miss Colbert and take the matter up directly with her. I wish you would. Thank you. Goodbye. Now, let's see. I'll look Claudette's number up in the phone book here. Here we are. Caldwell, Cauldron, Colfax, Coldcut. <laughs> I used to go with a girl named Coldcut. <laughs> Blossom Coldcut. <laughs> See, here we are. Colbert. Colbert. Oh, here it is. Claudette Colbert. Crestview 73872. Hello? Hello, I'd like to speak to Claudette Colbert, please. This is Miss Colbert speaking. <laughs> Oh, hello, Claudette. Uh, guess who this is? Well, really, I haven't the slightest idea. Well, you, you know me very well. Now, come on, get. Well, now... Uh, remember a few years ago at Paramount? Who had the dressing room next to yours? Oh, hello, Dorothy. <laughs> Dorothy? Look, this isn't Lemoore. Look, Dorothy's dressing room was on one side of yours. Now, who was on the other side? That was a washroom. <laughs> Only part of it. <laughs> Claudette, Claudette, this is Jack. Oh, Jack, hello. Jack who? <laughs> hello, Jack Benny. Benny. And Claudette, you'll never guess why I'm calling. You're starting a pyramid club. <laughs> I mean, besides that, look, <laughs> look, one, 
One of the reasons I called is to tell you that I saw your latest picture, Family Honeymoon, and I thought you were wonderful in it. Oh, thank you. You were really marvelous. I thought your characterization, your sincerity, and your comedy interpretation surpassed anything I've ever seen on the screen. Well, that's awfully sweet of you, Jack. I want to congratulate you on, uh, on, uh, on, uh... On, uh, on what, Claudette? What have you been doing lately? <laughs> lately, I'm with Columbia now. Oh, well, how are things on Broadway at night? No, no, no. You're thinking, you're thinking of Eastern Columbia. See, I'm with CBS. Oh. But look, Claudette, here's what I want to talk to you about. You see, Fletcher Markle, the director of the Ford Theater, just called me about the show you're going to do. Called you? Yes. And he suggested that I play the part of your husband in the sketch. But I understood Vincent Price was playing the part. Well, he was scheduled to, but if you want me, all you've got to do is speak up. I said, all you've got to do is speak up. Claudette. Just call me Johnny Belinda. <laughs> oh, oh. Well, I, I wish you'd think this over because it would really be a wonderful break. Especially for me. Oh, I wouldn't say that. Let's say it'll do us both a lot of good, shall we? <laughs> would you mind hanging up? <laughs> now, wait a minute, Claudette. How about the idea? Huh? Honestly, Jack, I have nothing now to do Now, look, Claudette, I've got another idea. Why can't Would I... Would you please deposit five cents for an additional three minutes? Three minutes already? <laughs> Just a second. Would you mind dropping a nickel in, Claudette? <laughs> you called me, remember? Oh, oh, that's right. What am I thinking of? Here, I've got a nickel. There. Gee, it doesn't seem like we've been talking for three minutes, does it, Claudette? You ought to be on this end. <laughs> Well, to come to the point, when do you start rehearsing for the play? Tonight at my house, but I don't think well, you Well, tonight, well, look, at, at your house, at what time? No, Jack, 8 o'clock, I, I really don't think 8 o'clock, well, thanks, to. Claudette, see you tonight. I'll read the part, and Vincent Price will read the part, and may the best man win. I hope so. I knew you'd be plugging for me. <laughs> well, goodbye. Goodbye. Oh, by the way, Claudette, shall I come for dinner? Claudette! Claudette! <laughs> Gee, that second three minutes went fast. <laughs> And you know, kids, after that, you think Jack would have sense enough to stay away, but not little blue eyes. No kidding. No, at 8 o'clock sharp, he showed up at Claudette Colbert's house. Gee, Claudette has a nice home. Yes, sir? Uh, Miss Colbert is expecting me for rehearsal. I'm Jack Benny. All right, this way, Mr. Benny. May I take your hat and coat? Here you are. Thank you. Well... It's the first time I ever saw a hat with a bird nest in it. Give me that. It came off. Oh. <laughs> They're going to rehearse in the drawing room, Mr. Benny. I'll show you it. Thank you. Mr. Price is already here. Oh, he is. One of those, uh, one of those anxious guys, eh? Well, well, Mr. Vincent Price. I'm Jack Benny, the movie star. How do you do? <laughs> How do you do, Mr. Price? So the, um, the two rivals meet, eh? Rivals? What do you mean? Well, perhaps I should let Claudette tell you, but it looks like I'm taking your place on the Ford Theater program. That's ridiculous, old boy. Oh, no, it isn't. You see, at rehearsal tonight, you and I are both going to read the part. And, of course, the best man will win. The, uh, best man? Yes. Mr. Benny, when only two people are involved in a statement, the comparative is used. You don't say the best man will win. You say the better man will win. Oh. Now, if three or more people are involved, then the word best is the correct adjective. I, uh, I see. So before we compete for this part, Mr. Benny, it might be well if you first learn to speak English. <laughs> well, for your information, Mr. Price, I went to Waukegan High School for four years and I excelled in English. In fact, I got 99 every single term. Well, ain't that ginger peach? Now, cut that out! <laughs> I've heard of sore losers in my life, but this guy takes the case. Now, step right in here, Mr. Markle. Miss Colbert will be with you shortly. Thank you. Oh, hello, Vincent. Fletcher, old boy. How are you? Fine, fine. Hello, Mr. Markle. What are you doing here? Well, I... 
Just thought I'd drop around and see if I... Now, listen, Fletcher. I don't know what this is all about, and I demand an explanation. Am I or am I not going to appear opposite Miss Colbert? Of course you are. Then what is this Schlemiel talking about? (laughs) Schlemiel? Yes. S-H-L-E... I know how to spell it. (laughs) I didn't get 99 in English for nothing. (laughs) Now, let me tell you something. Good evening, everybody. Oh, look, here's Claudette. Oh, hello, hello Claudette. Claudette. How are you, darling? Well, everybody's here now. Just set the coffee on the table, Richard. Yes, madam. Coffee, Fletcher? No, thank you. Vincent? Yes, please. I'll, uh, I'll have a cup, too. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Here you are, Jack. Thanks. Mmm. Gee, Claudette, this is the better coffee I ever tasted. <laughs> The word is best. There are only two of us drinking it. Make up your mind. <laughs> For heaven's sake. But we're all here, so let's get started with the rehearsal. Richard, uh, you may take the cups away now. But Mr. Benny hasn't finished his coffee yet. Oh. Well, you can take his cup. He's drinking out of the saucer. <laughs> Oh, I'm through now, so let's get going with the contest. I mean, the rehearsal. Just one moment. Fletcher, let's get this settled for Mr. Benny's benefit. Is he or is he not replacing me in the play? Certainly not. That's ridiculous. Of course it's ridiculous. I think it's absurd. You stay out of it. (laughs) Just take my saucer like you were told. (laughs) Smart Alec. Please, please, let's get on with the rehearsal. Now, Mr. Benny, if you insist on staying, take a chair and be quiet. Yes, sir. Oh, Claudette, is it all right if I have some of these walnuts here? Certainly. Help yourself. Thanks. Mmm. <laughs> See, they're big ones. Now, uh, Claudette, if you and Vincent are ready, please to begin. Boy, these nuts are good. <laughs> Claudette, uh, in this play, you're a wealthy society girl who's married to a New York stockbroker. That's you, Vincent. <laughs> but, uh... He doesn't love you, Claudette, and as the French say, it's a marriage of convenience. That was a tough one. (laughs) Mr. Benny, will you please stop eating those nuts? Claudette said I could. Anyway, Mr. Mark, I don't want to sit around here like a bump on a log. If I can't have the lead in the play, isn't there something I can do? All right. It'll make you happy. You can play the part of the butler. Hmm. Butler. Here's your script. Thanks. Now, remember, Claudette, you're the wife. Vincent... You're the husband who doesn't understand her. And Jack... I'm the butler whom Claudette really loves. You're the butler, that's all. Don't shout at me, I'm old enough to be your brother. (laughs) Heavens to Betsy. All right, Claudette, now you start the scene. Remember, your husband is two hours late for dinner and you're a nervous wreck. I understand. Go ahead, you call the butler. Yes. Oh, Smedley. Smedley. Yes, madam. Smedley, yes. <laughs> what is it, madam? Are you sure my husband hasn't phoned? No, madam. Shall I serve dinner? No, Smedley, no. I'm much too upset to eat. I've been under such tension all day. I feel so miserable and low. Now, Claudette, at this point, the husband enters the room. Go ahead, Vincent, make your entrance. Okay. Uh, good evening, darling. So sorry I'm late. Oh, Michael, you're always late, and you're always sorry. It's been like this for months. What's come between us? If I only knew, maybe we could work things out. Oh, it's nothing, my dear. It's just that I've been so busy lately at the office. Now, let's forget it. Come here and give me a kiss, and perhaps we can... Dinner, sir. Oh, pardon me. I came in too soon. <laughs> uh, I can't just kiss you and forget it, Michael. We must come to some understanding. This can't go on forever. When? Let's be adult about the whole thing, shall we? Every night it's the same argument, this constant nagging, nagging, nagging. I tell you, I've been working at the office. But I phoned your office and they said you left at two this afternoon. Well, I had business at the bank. Do I have to explain my every move to you? Your jealousy is driving me insane. <laughs> See, this one's got a worm in it. <laughs> Put it back in the bowl. Jack, stop interrupting. Now, continue, Claudette. Yes, sir. Oh, it's no use, Michael. I know you're lying. Look at you. Everything you say, everything you do gives you away. We must reach a definite understanding. Well, you can keep on talking. I'm going to have dinner. But, Michael, I can't go through with another day of this uncertainty. I must know. 
Do you love me or not? Of course I love you. You're lying, Michael, lying. Very well, then, I'm lying. You might as well know the truth, my dear. I've never loved you, never. Keith. And if you weren't so stupid, you'd have known it long ago. Michael, Michael, what are you saying? I married you for your money, that's all. Gosh. Everybody else knew it. And if you weren't such a blind little fool, you would have realized it yourself. Oh, stop! Michael, stop! Well, Gwen, now that you know how things stand, the sooner you divorce me, the happier I'll be. No! No, I'll never divorce you, Michael. I couldn't live without you. I couldn't. I couldn't. Tears, tears. Oh, stop the dramatics! Yes, Michael! I'm moving to my club. Smedley, pack my clothes. I wouldn't touch your dirty <laughs> Quiet, Jack. Uh, continue, Vincent. Well, goodbye, Gwen. I'm going to the club. Our attorneys can get together tomorrow. Don't go, Michael. Please don't go. Stop hanging on to me. But I won't give you up. I won't. I won't. Stop it, I say. Let go of me. No, no. Then take that. <laughs> that does it. Striking a woman. Put up your dukes, Mr. Price. What? Come on, fight. Ooh. <laughs> well, look at Benny. He's out cold. <laughs> Vincent, you shouldn't have hit him so hard. I didn't hit him. I did, madam. <laughs> Shall I throw some cold water in his face? No, no, we'll just go in the other room and rehearse. Come on, Vincent, and bring the walnut. <laughs> hmm, that Mary has a lot of nerve. Oh, Jack, Jack. Oh, hello, Claudette. What are you sitting on the curb for? Oh, it's all your fault. You told Mary what happened at your house the other night. Now she's inside telling it to Dennis and Phil. And you know Mary. She'll put in a lot of things that aren't even true. Yeah, yes, I know. Uh, by the way, Jack, how's your nose? Well, it's a little better, but it still hurts. Good night, folks. <laughs> The Lucky Strike Program, starring Jack Benny, with Mary Livingston, Phil Harris, Rochester, Dennis Day, and yours truly, Don Wilson. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, tomorrow, February 14th, is Valentine's Day, and it's also the birthday of the star of our show. So here he is... Jack Valentine Benny! Thank you, thank you. Hello again, this is Jack Benny talking, and Don, that was very nice of you to remember my birthday. How did you ever think of it? Well, Jack, a strange thing happened last night. I ate at that Chinese restaurant you recommended. Uh huh. And Don, I hope you. Broke open one of those rice fortune cakes. Oh, yes, I did. And the little paper said, "'Tis better to give than to receive, and Monday is Jack Benny's birthday." <laughs> oh, and uh, what did you bring me for a present, Don? Well, it was too late to go shopping, so I brought you a pocket full of fried rice. <laughs> too late to go shopping. I told you to have lunch there, not dinner. Anyway, Don, I'll take the rice. There's a friend of mine getting married Wednesday. Yeah? <laughs> Thanks very much. Well, uh, tell me, Jack, how does it feel being a year older? Don, I don't know. It seems strange to advance another year. But then, on the other hand, there's something exciting about reaching 40. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. Well, Jack, you may be 40, but I must say you look much younger. Well, Don, it's nice of you to say that, but let's face it. I mean, my age is beginning to show, you know, a little wrinkle here, a gray hair there. <laughs> eh! Time marches on. <laughs> now, uh, let's get on with the program. Oh, wait a minute, Jack. Before we get into the show, I, I have a little surprise for you. A surprise, Don? Yes. Now, the whole audience is going to join in. All right, everybody. One, two, three. Happy birthday to you! Happy birthday to you! Happy birthday, Jack Benny! Happy birthday to you! Wow! Thank you, thank you.
Thank you, everybody. Thanks very much. Oh, wasn't that nice, Jack? Yes, very nice, Don, but, uh, but, uh... But what? Well, I was watching one fellow sitting in the front row, and he didn't sing at all. As a matter of fact, he had a frown on his face, and I'm just curious to know why. Oh, mister! Mister! Me! Yeah, would you mind coming up here on the stage for a minute? Okay. Now, look, Mr., uh, Mr. Fink. F-I-N-Q-U-E. Fink. <laughs> oh. oh. Well, Mr. Fink, uh, I'm just curious to know. You were the... You were the only one who didn't sing Happy Birthday to me. Why was that? Do you sing to me on my birthday? <laughs> No, no, but then how can I? I don't even know when your birthday is. It's December the 24th, and all you hear people singing is jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle out the way. Not one word about Fink. <laughs> well, that's that's too bad. Now, look, Mr. Fink. F-I-N-Q-U-E. I know, I know. Yeah, that's French. <laughs> yes, yes. In Paris, it's Fink K. <laughs> I don't care what it is. All I want to know is, if you've got this chip on your shoulder, why did you come in here in the first place? Who wanted to come in? I was standing in line for the Amos and Andy show, and some guy came over and told me that they was giving away refrigerators in here. (laughs) Giving away refrigerators? In radio or programs, either got to give you entertainment or a refrigerator. Now, where's my icebox? You're not getting an icebox, so go sit down. Okay, okay. Twelve programs this week, and I still ain't got a stick of furniture. (laughs) Keep quiet, please. Don, regardless of what just happened, I do appreciate... Hello, Don. Hello, Mary. Hello, Jack. Happy birthday. Well, thank you, Mary. It was awfully sweet of you to remember it. Well, Jack, I must confess that I forgot all about your birthday, but a strange thing happened. Remember yesterday when you said I looked like I was gaining weight? Yes, yes. Well, today as I came in the lobby of CBS, I stepped on the scale to weigh myself. Uh Uh-huh. And a card came out saying, you weigh 112 pounds, you are kind of dogs, and tomorrow is Jack Benny's birthday. (laughs) No. I couldn't believe it either, so I put in another penny, and a card came out that said, don't stand here all day, you got shopping to do. (laughs) Oh, well, did you, did you do it? Oh, I'll have something for you tomorrow. Good, that's my birthday anyway. And just think, Mary, tomorrow I'll be 40. 40, eh? Yes, 40. Uh, Jack, let me ask you something. What? Many years ago, you were in vaudeville, weren't you? Yes. And many times, you were on the same bill with Eddie Cantor. Yes, yes, I was. And at that time, you and Cantor were the same age, weren't you? Uh Uh-huh. Well, Jack, today Eddie Cantor admits that he's over 50. How come you're only 40? Oh, I don't know. Just lucky, I guess. <laughs> anyway, Mary, now that I'm approaching middle age, I'll have to slow down the mad social world and cut down my nightlife a little, you know? Oh, some nightlife. You have a hamburger at Simon, squeeze the waitress's hand, and then run home and dream your Errol Flynn. <laughs> Errol Flynn, Errol Flynn. <laughs> Mary, if you're so smart, let me ask you a question. If I was born in 1909, how old would I be today? Don't answer him, sister. He ain't giving away nothing. <laughs> you keep out of this. Uh, who, who's that? Some guy named Fink. If I ain't you. I know, I know. <laughs> don't, uh, don't pay any attention to him, Mary. There's one in every audience, you know. <laughs> By the way, Jack, my sister babe wanted to send you a birthday card, but she didn't know your address, so she sent it to me. Your sister babe? Oh, have you got the card with you? Yes, I'll read it to you. Congratulations. It's wonderful to be 40, Jack. I've been there twice, and I'm coming back. (laughs) Say, say, that's kind of cute. Oh, babe has a wonderful sense of humor. Yeah. Remember the time she painted an extra toe on your uncle's foot, and he thought he had seven? (laughs) But how about 
the time. Now, wait a minute, wait a minute, Mary. This is all very funny. It's very funny, but I think you've stalled long enough. Stalled? What do you mean? Well, you know, every year on my birthday, you always give me a big kiss. Oh, well, Jack, I sort of figured now that you're getting older, well, you, you might not be interested in kissing anymore. Oh, I'm not, eh? Come here and I'll show you. <laughs> There. How was that? Thank you, Errol Flynn. <laughs> you said it. Now put me down. <laughs> Thanks. I just wanted to show you that, uh, that being 40 doesn't... Oh, hello, Dennis. Hey, Dennis, you're just in time for your song. Okay, Mr. Benny, I'm glad I got here on time. On the way down, I had to stop off at our family doctor's office and punch him in the nose. <laughs> you, uh, you punched your doctor in the nose? He had it coming. My mother told me what he did. What? When I was born, for no reason at all, he slapped me. <laughs> Dennis. And my back was turned, too. Dennis, never, never mind that. Let's have your song. Okay, but first, congratulations on your birthday. Oh, well, it's awfully sweet of you to remember it, kid. I never would have thought of it if you hadn't given me that ticket to the burlesque show last night. Now, never mind, Dennis. Uh, what did the burlesque show have to do with it? Well, a girl came out to do a dance. Her bubble broke and a sign fell out saying, Monday is Jack Benny's birthday. <laughs> Dennis. You must be popular. Boy, what applause you got. <laughs> all right, all right. They whistled and everything. Dennis. What a fuss over a man's birthday. Dennis, you found out it was my birthday. That's all that matters. Now, come on, let's have your song. Okay. Gee, when I'm 40, I hope I don't look like him. <laughs> what did you say? Sing, Dennis. That's better. <laughs> Sung by Dennis Day. Very good, Dennis. That was wonderful. Congratulations on your birthday. <laughs> Dennis, you congratulated me already. Forget it. I tried, but I can't get that bubble dancer out of my mind. <laughs> well, force yourself. <laughs> say, uh, say, Mary. You know, Mr. Benny, it must be nice to have your birthday come on Valentine's Day. Yes, kid, but there's only one thing against it. You know, so many famous people were born in the month of February. Longfellow, Lincoln, Washington at... You know, it makes it hard for me to be outstanding. I can imagine. Of course, I, uh... <laughs> of course, I don't want you to think for a minute that I'm comparing myself to a man like Washington. Why not? Washington wore a wig, too. <laughs> very clever, very clever. Did you, uh... Did you make up that joke yourself, Mary? Uh-huh. And you, uh, like that type of joke? Yeah, I thought it was very funny. I see. Hello, May Company? <laughs> you can take the candle out of the window. Mary's coming home. You better watch it, sister. Another gag like that. Hiya, Jackson. You sure look nifty, even though tomorrow you're going to be 30. <laughs> what? Wait a minute, Phil. Nifty doesn't rhyme with 30. I know, but it's better than breaking an old man's heart. Hiya, Liv. <laughs> Hello, Phil. <laughs> hey, here you are, Jackson. I brought you a little birthday present. Well, Phil, is it really too much to think that you, of all people, would remember my birthday? Well, a funny thing happened. Last night I was in a bar and I happened to look up and I saw a little sign that said, Monday's Jack Benny's birthday. Uh, Phil, that was written on the ceiling? No, under the table. <laughs> I knew you'd see it. <laughs> Jack. What? Jack, why don't you open the present Phil gave you? Phil's present? Yeah. Okay. Oh, Phil, this is swell. What is it, Jack? 
One glove. <laughs> Phil, why in the world would you give me only one glove? You never take your right hand out of your pocket anyway. <laughs> Now, wait a minute. Hey, Jackson, look, all kidding aside, how old are you going to be tomorrow? Forty. Jackson, will you lay that on me again? I've been rehearsing my band and my ears are still folded. <laughs> I said I was going to be forty. What are you talking about? You've got topes older than that. <laughs> topes? And that's a factor, Max. <laughs> Oh, Harris, you may not be with Columbia, but you're the gem of the ocean. <laughs> Phil, Phil, is that a natural point on your head, or are you advertising a pyramid club? <laughs> you can tell some of the most oh, awful... Oh, Jack, Jack, it's getting kind of late. Don't you think we ought to get started with that hillbilly sketch we're going to do tonight? I'm glad you brought that up, Don. We're not going to do that sketch. From now on, we're going to do the finer type of play like they do on dramatic shows. After 17 years, about time this show got a little class. Well, Dad, if you want to class things up a little, next week I'll have the band wear tuxedos. <laughs> Phil, if you can just get them to tuck in their shirts, I'll be happy. <laughs> anyway, kids, from now on, we're going to do a higher class of comedy. The kind Happy that... birthday, Mr. Benny. <laughs> Huh? That bubble dance is driving me nuts. <laughs> Dennis, go sit down. Jack, what do you want to change your program for? Well, John's right. Last week you tried to get on the Ford Theater with Claudette Colbert and Vincent Price, and you know what happened. Fletcher Markle, the director, thought you were terrible. Oh, he did, eh? Well, if Mr. Markle thought I was so terrible, why did he give me a contract to appear on the Ford Theater March 4th? No kidding, Jackson. You going to be on the Ford Theater? Yes, sir, on March 4th. And just wait till you hear the performance I give. It'll live. It'll sparkle. It'll bubble. <whistles> Dennis! Forget about that girl. <laughs> anyway, kids, I've got a contract to appear on the Ford Theater March 4th, and I can't wait till I get on it. What play are you going to do, Jack? The Horn Blows at Midnight. What? what? You heard me. I'm going to do The Horn Blows at Midnight. You wouldn't dare. <laughs> I wouldn't, eh? <laughs> Just wait and see. Well, Jackson, that proves you must be at least 60. Why? Nobody could get that much guts in 40 years. <laughs> oh, yeah, well, I don't care what any of you kids think. I'm going to prove once and for all that The Horn Blows at Midnight is a great story. That's telling, Mr. Benny. Thanks, Dennis. Did you see the picture? Yeah, I saw it four years ago when I was in the service. Oh, did the Navy show my picture to the boys? No, to the Japs, but I snuck in. <laughs> all right, you can all say what you want to, but I'm going to do the horn blows at midnight. Now you're talking. My wife saw that picture, and it was wonderful. It was, Mr. Fink? Yeah, they let her in for nothing, and they gave her four sets of dishes. <laughs> well, why didn't you go? I'm holding out for an icebox. box. <laughs> Oh, yes, yes, I forgot. Hey, Mary, I just thought of a wonderful joke. Mary, ask me why we have quartets here in America, but in Scotland they only have quintets. Ask me that. Go ahead. That's good. All right, Jack. Why do they only have quintets in Scotland? Because all scotch comes in fifths. <laughs> <laughs> Say, how, how about that one? Pretty good, huh? Uh, Jack, did you make up that joke all by yourself? Yep. And you like that joke? I thought it was pretty clever. You did, eh? <laughs> Hello, NBC? Leave the back door open. Blue Eyes is coming home. <laughs> Mary, if you try to get even with me, it didn't work. I'm staying here at CBS till... till something freezes over. It ain't gonna be no refrigerator. Oh, Keith! <laughs> I thought he left already. Oh, say, Jack. Yes, Don? While the quartet was singing, this telegram came for you. A telegram for me? Yeah, Jack. I took the liberty of giving the boy a 25-cent tip. Oh. Well, here's a nickel, Don, and you're at liberty to chase the boy for the other 20 cents. <laughs> Give me the telegram. Thanks. Gee, it's from my sister, Florence. What does she say? She says, Dear Jack, I've been listening to your program, and I thought I should send you this wire immediately. 
You're mistaken about your age. You're not going to be 40 years old tomorrow. You're going to be... Oh, no. No, this can't be. This is awful. Well, Jack, how old does your sister say you're going to be tomorrow? 39. <laughs> oh, my goodness, this is embarrassing. But my sister Florence ought to know, I guess, instead of being born in 1909, it was 1910. Now, wait a minute, Jack. How could you be born in 1910? I happen to know that in 1917, you were in the Navy. Well, of course I was in the Navy. You think I'm a slacker? <laughs> well, how old were you then? Seven. <laughs> How could Mary, you be... don't argue with me. They measure me for a uniform, cut off my curls at the same time. But, Jack, if you were only seven years old, how could you possibly get in the Navy? I owned a battleship and shut up. <laughs> anyway, this thing has got me puzzled. I'm going to call Rochester and have him look up my birth certificate. My sister Florence says I'm 39. I think I'm 40. I'm going to find out. Say, Mabel... What is it, Geitschel? <laughs> Mr. Benny's line is flashing. Yeah, I wonder what King Midas wants now. <laughs> I'll plug in and find out. Yes, Mr. Benny. Yes, I'll call your house immediately. He wants I should get him Rochester. <laughs> you know what, Mabel? What? I never saw a man like Mr. Benny. He has such a split personality. On the radio, he's one type of person, and in real life, he's an entirely different type of person. Yeah, and I don't like either one of them. <laughs> well, I like him. But you know what? Last week, he tried to make me jealous by going out with another girl. Was she cute? Cute. Eh. <laughs> you should have seen her. Buttons and bow legs. <laughs> so what? You're bow-legged. I am not. You are, too. When you wear white stockings, you look like the O in Honest John. <laughs> All right. At least I'm commercial. Operator. Oper Gertrude, get me my home. I'm trying. I'm trying. You know, Rome wasn't built in a day. Well, you girls ought to know. You helped build it. <laughs> For this, they pay two million dollars. <laughs> Never mind. Now, please ring my home. Okay, okay. I'm ringing it. Smart Alec Gertrude. Takes you out. She takes you out to dinner once. She thinks she owns you. <laughs> oh, well. Mr. Benny's residence, star, stage, radio, and silent pictures. <laughs> Rochester, it's me. Oh, 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 oh! Hello, boy. Look, what took you so long to answer the phone? Well, tomorrow's your birthday, and I was out in the kitchen finishing your cake. The cake? Yeah, you ought to see it, boss. Across the top in whipped cream, I wrote, Happy Birthday. Well, that's nice, Rochester. Uh, by the way, how many peas in happy? Two. Uh-oh. Oh, so you better add one. Add one? I better cross one out. I got three. <laughs> you can do that later. Now, Rochester, here's why I called you. I don't know what to do. I thought tomorrow was going to be my 40th birthday. But I just got a wire from my sister, and she says I'm going to be 39. Well, don't argue with her, boss. Grab it! <laughs> Rochester, i got to be honest with myself. Now, I want you to look at my birth certificate and tell me the date on it. Your birth certificate? Yeah, do you know where it is? It's right here on the desk. What's my birth certificate doing on the desk? You got it out the other day when you applied for your old age pension. <laughs> Oh, I just did that for a gag. Well, they must be laughing. Your first check came today. <laughs> Rochester, stop making things up. Now, look at my birth certificate. I'm looking at it. Now, in the space where it says date of birth, what, what's there? A hole. A hole in the paper? Yeah, we erased it once too often. <laughs> Oh, well, then there's nothing I can do, and I'll have to take my sister's word for it. I guess so, boss. Your sister must be right. Yep, I'm 39. Goodbye, Rochester. Goodbye. Oh, say, boss. <laughs> what are you laughing at? Aren't we devils? You and me? No, me and your sister. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Goodbye, Rochester. Goodbye. <laughs> Oh, come on, Mary. The car's right around the corner. I'll drive you home. Okay. You know, Mary, that was a pretty good program we just did, but I think... Hey, Benny. Benny. Huh? Oh, it's you, Mr. Fink. Yeah, don't you know some program I can go on and win a refrigerator? 
No, I don't. Come on, Mary. Well, I'm going to get a refrigerator even if I have to buy one. Well, I don't care if... Buy one? Uh, get in the car, mister. Yeah! Let him sit in front, Mary. It's more comfortable. Good night, folks. <laughs> Lucky Strike program starring Jack Benny with Mary Livingston, Phil Harris, Rochester, Dennis Day, and yours truly, Don Wilson. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, let's go back about an hour. Jack is in his dressing room getting ready for the broadcast. Rochester, did you run over and get me a sandwich? Yeah, boss, here it is. Good. Oh, for heaven's sake. Sardines. Rochester, I can't understand you. What's the matter, boss? You never get anything right. When I send you for a chicken sandwich, you bring me ham. When I ask you for a ham sandwich, you bring me cheese. When I ask you for cheese, you bring me egg. When I ask for egg, you bring me turkey. And today, you bring me a sardine sandwich. Now, what did I send you for? A sardine sandwich. <laughs> oh, yes, I forgot. <laughs> but look, Rochester, I figured you'd make a mistake. I asked you for a sardine sandwich because I wanted corned beef. I knew that, but they were out of corned beef, so I brought you sardines. All right, I'll eat the sardine sandwich. Did you get me a bottle of Coca-Cola? Yes, boss, here it is. Wait a minute. This is root beer. That's funny. I asked for seven up. <laughs> no, fine. Well, at least you got the sandwich on rye. How did that happen? Oh, we never did have trouble with the bread. Well, I better eat it in a hurry. Oh, darn it. What's the matter? And I pick up the sandwich, the sardine slipped out, went into my sleeve. <laughs> Help me get them out. Mm, what a mess. Well, I'll eat after the broadcast. Now, help me finish dressing. Okay. Which toupee do you want, boss? The one with the part in the middle or the part on the side? Uh, didn't you bring the black one with the widow's peak? <laughs> <laughs> oh, you can't wear that toupee anymore. Why not? It turned gray while you were dickering with CBS. <laughs> Oh, stop. Dusty, maybe, but gray, no. <laughs> now, Rochester. Who is it? It's me, Jack. Come on in, Mary. Jack, did you take my fountain pen? Yes, yes, here you are, Mary. You know, I, I use it. I just put down a wonderful joke I want you to do on the program and surprise the cast. Here, read it. Oh, for heaven's sake, Jack. Another joke about my sister, babe? Well, it's funny. Go ahead and read it. I want to hear how it'll sound on the program. Oh, uh -huh. all right. Say, Jack, my sister babe lost her job in that restaurant. But, Mary, she was with that restaurant five years. How come they let her go? <laughs> They've got a cat to catch the mice now. <laughs> oh, poor babe. And after she let her fingernails grow. <laughs> <laughs> Jack, we can't say a thing like that about babe. Why not? That's a funny joke. Joke nothing. It really happened to her. <laughs> Oh, well, then we won't do the gag. I don't want to hurt her feelings. I'll think of something. Well, I hope you're not serious about doing the horn blows at midnight. Uh-oh, Miss Livingston, you shouldn't have said that. Rochester, what's wrong with mentioning the horn blows at midnight? It doesn't bother me, but the rye bread turned white. <laughs> don't be funny. Now, look, Mary, I'm still going to do that play on the Ford Theater. Fletcher Markle, the director, gave me a contract, and that's that. Now, come on, let's get out on the stage. Well, wait a minute. You're not going to do the program in that polo shirt. Why, what's wrong with a polo shirt? Clark Gable wears one. So what? Jane Russell wears sweaters, but I'm a suit gal myself. <laughs> all right, all right. Come on, Mary, let's get out on the stage. Hey, Phil! Phil! Hi, Phil! Hold it! Hold it, fellas! Hold it! Hold it! Hold it! Father Time is here. <laughs> Look, Jackson, what'd you stop us for? We were rehearsing a number. I know, Phil, but I just want to compliment you on trying to improve the orchestra. I noticed you got a harp this week. Yeah, but we can't use it anymore, Jackson. That was a mistake. Why? What happened? During rehearsal, Frankie woke up, saw the harp, and thought he was dead. <laughs> no. Then he tried to fly over the piano and almost broke his neck. 
Well, it serves them right for sleeping during rehearsal. Uh, Jack, let's run through our parts till the others get here. Okay. Here, Phil, take a script. Look, Jackson, I don't need no script. I'm loaded with jokes. Phil, take a script. I thought of a gag that's a dilly. Get this. On my way down to the studio, I stopped off at a bar. Phil, take a script. And while I was there, I met a fellow who came from Venice, Italy. Phil. So I bought him a drink, he bought me a drink, then I bought him a drink, then he bought me a drink. Phil. We kept buying each other drinks for a couple of hours, and when I walked out, he was under the table. Phil. (laughs) Phil, take a script. Well, don't you get it, Jackson? The guy who was under the table was from Venice, a Venetian. So what? I'm the only guy who ever drank a Venetian blind. If you lived in Beverly Hills, they'd blow up your house. <laughs> well, don't head me off, Jackson. I'm rolling now. <laughs> hey, Liv, how'd you like that joke, lover? Bill, take a script. <laughs> Thanks, Mary. And don't get too close to Phil. He might exhale and disintegrate your nylon. <laughs> Pico, but I changed it. And I... <laughs> the pulpit is funnier than Pico. I don't... And Phil, Phil, your orchestra did surprisingly well. Yeah? well. What are you so surprised about? I haven't told you this, but they want my band to play at the Academy Awards ceremony. Really? <laughs> so why in the world would they want your band to play for the Academy Awards? Well, we play loud and it'll drown out the screams of the losers. <laughs> Well, Phil, I don't believe that you or your band can... Come in. Jack, look who it is. Oh, yes, Fletcher Markle. Hello, Mr. Markle. Hello, Jack. <laughs> Jack, uh, I hope I'm not interrupting, but... Well, that's uh... quite all right, Fletcher. I, uh... I suppose you come over to discuss my appearance on the Ford Theater. Yes, that's exactly why I'm here. Good, good. Is there something about the casting? No, not the casting. Oh. Is it about the rehearsals? No, not rehearsals. Oh. Is it about the picture I selected to do? Yes, it stinks. <laughs> What? Jack. Uh-huh. As director of the Ford Theater, really, I why are you it. laughing? <laughs> what, were, what were you going to say? Director of the Ford Theater, I beg you, really, don't do this on our program. Now, wait a minute, Mr. Markle. You signed a contract with me, didn't you? Yes, but you tricked me. That contract said you were going to do an adventure story of the sea called Sailing Around Cape Horn. Well, you didn't read the small type in the contract. The full title was Sailing Around Cape Horn Blows at Midnight. (laughs) And that's what I'm going to do. Jack, I think Mr. Markle is right. That script isn't suitable for radio. I know that, Mary, but I went through the screenplay, eliminated all the dull stuff, and I'm just going to do the part that sparkled. Mr. Benny, we have an hour program, not a spot announcement. It's an hour program. And I'm going to do the horn blows at midnight, and it'll be a great show, believe me. Well, there's nothing I can do about it. So long, Jack. So long, Mr. Marco. Oh, uh, by the way, Jack, when you signed that contract, there was one thing I neglected to get for our records. Uh, What's your social security number? Two. Al Jolson is number one. Yes, we got there early. Well, so long, Fletcher. See you March 4th. Goodbye, Jack. To be or not to be, that is the question. Whether it is wiser to use gas and smell up the house or use a pistol and mess up the rug. What'd you say, Fletcher? Nothing. Goodbye. Jack, 
Jack, I can't understand it. Why, Don? Well, if they're so set against your doing the horn blows at midnight, why do you insist on it? Because once and for all, I'm going to prove to everyone that it's a great story. Now, Don, imagine this plot. The chief of the planet sends an angel down to Earth to blow a trumpet and destroy the whole world. And I'm the angel. Now, cut that out! <laughs> I try to do something dignified, and everybody has to butt in, and... I never saw anything... Oh, hello, Dennis. Oh, hello, Mr. Benny. Congratulate me. Congratulate you? Why? I just sold my bicycle for $10,000. You... You what? Yeah. Look, here's the check. Let me see that. Pay to the order of Dennis Day, $10,000. Oh, for heaven's sake, kid. This check isn't even signed. I noticed that, but I didn't want to mention it. <laughs> why? When a man gives you $10,000 for a bicycle, why antagonize him? <laughs> Holy smoke. Dennis, I'm afraid you were cheated. Didn't you even get the name of the man who bought it? Oh, sure. He told me his name, all right. What was it? Napoleon Bonaparte. <laughs> oh, fine. Dennis, don't you know anything? Napoleon Bonaparte has been dead for over a hundred years. He has? Certainly. Then what does he want with a bicycle? <laughs> now look, Dennis. Dennis, my child, look. <laughs> Instead of having any more of this nonsense, look at how about running through your song? Okay. Oh, well, by the way, Mr. Benny, happy birthday. My birthday was last week. I know, but that bubble dancer was held over. <laughs> good, good. Now, what number are you going to do? The title song from Walt Disney's picture, So Dear to My Heart. All right, let's hear it. Okay. Very good song, Dennis, and you sang it beautifully. Why are you just saying that because I'm rich now? <laughs> Dennis, that check's no good. You never like anything that anybody else has. Oh, God. Dennis, the last time I'm going to compliment you on your singing. Because every time I do, you start right in. Come in. Yes, sir, is there... Well, it's Jack Warner of the Warner Brothers Studio. Hello, Jack. Hello. Well, this is a surprise. Uh, uh, what can I do for you, Mr. Warner? Well, Jack, I just heard the news about your making an appearance on the Fourth Theater. Yes, Mr. Warner, on March 4th. And I'm going to do the horn blows at midnight. That's just what I want to talk to you about. What? Look, Jack, you made this picture for us in 1944, didn't you? That's right. It was for the Warner Brothers. Well, since then, our studio has produced The Adventures of Don Juan, Life of Father, Key Largo, John Loves Mary... And this year, our two pictures, Johnny Belinda and the treasure of the Sierra Madre are up for the Academy Awards. So? So we're rolling again. Let us alone. <laughs> now, uh... <laughs> now, now, just a minute, Mr. Warner. How can you say that? You yourself told me that when the horn blows at midnight was shown in Hollywood, the theater made money. That's right. We rented the balcony out as a trailer camp. <laughs> but, Mr. Warner, you can't put all the blame on me. When you did that picture, you made one big mistake. Yeah, I know. We put film in the camera. <laughs> Look, Mr. Warner, that's an old joke. Yeah, if I had anything new, I'd have put it in the picture. <laughs> well, I'm sorry, but I still think it's a great story. Hey, if you didn't produce it good, what could I do? I mean? <laughs> but if you'd have listened to me, if you'd have listened to me while we were making it, the horn blows at midnight would have been a terrific hit. Jack, we tried everything. We made a lot of retakes. It was awful how we threw money away on that picture. Threw money away? Yeah, we spent... Over $500,000 for a new finish, and nobody ever stayed to see it. 
wonder you can't make good pictures. You fluff over lines. <laughs> Warner, I want to tell you something. All of that about the horn blows of that I was not my fault. I think that picture had great possibilities. Well, no, Jack, it missed both ways. Both ways? What do you mean? Well, if it had been a little better, we might have gotten our money back in the theaters. Yes? If it were a little worse, it would be unnatural for television. <laughs> Never m- m- mind television. <laughs> I'll tell you, Mr. Warner, it's going to be great when I do it on the Ford Theater. All right, Jack, if you won't listen to reason, maybe you'll listen to this. We'll give you $5,000 not to do it. No. $10,000. I'm sorry, Mr. Warner, but money means nothing to me. I've got to listen to repeat show and see if he really heard that. See if I really heard See if I really heard that. <laughs> You ought to make your pictures with Jack Warner. I know we rehearsed it. I know. Anything else? Huh? What? Just a little shaker. Huh? I've had a pair of dice my hands. will be very nice. All right. Read just what's there. That's all. Read what's there. What? Here it is. Wait a minute. Here, well, Jack. Oh, oh, yeah. oh, I see. Go ahead. Yeah, the... Mary... You didn't say Mary. I say Mary, you. please. Oh, you got the next one. Go ahead. Go ahead. Well, Jack, here's my final offer. My brother Harry and I are willing to take you into the firm and make you one of the Warner Brothers. No, I'm afraid not. That means I'd have to change my name. If you do the picture, we're going to change ours. <laughs> I'm sorry, but my mind is made up. I'm going to do the horn blows at midnight on the radio, and that's final, Mr. Warner. Just call me Sam Goldwyn. (laughs) What? (laughs) Yeah, you heard me. Just call me Sam Goldwyn. You've got to say goodbye. Oh, I'll just say goodbye. get a $50 actor to play Jack Warner. I had to get the Jack Warner up here. What? Jack. What? I've never... I've never seen you so determined. Why didn't you consider his offer of going in with the Warner Brothers? I'll tell you why. Because I have my own company. I just produced a picture myself called The Lucky Stiff. And there's a wonderful article about it in the new Liberty magazine. I know, Mr. Benny. I saw it. You saw the article in Liberty about me, Dennis? What did it say? Reading time, 11 minutes. <laughs> Look, Dennis. But I made it in nine. What? I had my bicycle then. I don't care about the reading time. What did the article say about... Oh, I'll get it, Jack. Hello? New York calling? Yes, he's here. Jack, it's Mr. William Paley, the head of CBS. Oh. Oh, I wonder what he wants. Uh, Hello, Mr. Paley. Yes, yes, this is Jack. Oh, yes, I'm feeling fine. How are you? Good, good. What? Yes, yes, that's right, on March the 4th. Yes, I know the Ford Theater's on CBS. And you want to hear something funny? Fletcher Markle and Jack Warner came over and tried to talk me out of doing the horn... (laughs) What? Now, just the... I know Mr. Paley, but... But Mr. Paley... But, 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 why, 
Why, Mr. Pace. Well. <laughs> I'm sorry, Mr. Paley, but I've made up my mind, and I'm going to do the Horn Blows at Midnight on the Ford Theater, March 4th, and that's final. Yes, Mr. Paley. Goodbye. Hmm. Jack. Jack, how could you talk to Mr. Paley like that? Mary, there comes a time in every man's life when he must have the courage of his convictions, when he must have faith in his own judgment, so he can stand up and face the world with pride with dignity. Jack, what's that sticking out of your sleeve? Huh? Oh, it's a sardine. <laughs> Must have got caught in my suspenders. <laughs> Thanks, Fletcher Markle and Jack Warner. Good night, everybody. program starring Jack Benny with Barry Livingston, Phil Harris, Rochester, Dennis Day, the Sportsman Quartet, and yours truly, Don Wilson. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, let's go out to Jack Benny's home in Beverly Hills, where he's waiting for Professor LeBlanc to arrive and give him a violin lesson. At the moment, the professor is approaching the house. Here was Michel Benny's house. Why did I have to become a violin teacher? If there was such a thing as reincarnation, I would be happy to die and come back as a pig or a dog. <laughs> but with my luck, I would come back as a cat and end up on Michel Benny's violin. <laughs> well, I might as well go in. Well, Professor LeBlanc, how do you do, Michel Benny? Uh, you were supposed to be here for my lesson yesterday. Why didn't you come? Last Sunday, I heard that you were going to be on the Ford Theater program and do the horn blows at midnight. Yes, yes. With 18 million Fords on the road, I figured at least one of them would hit you. <laughs> Come on, Professor. Let's go in the den and start the lesson. We. Oui. Now I'll get my violin and. Hmm, that's funny. It was here a few minutes ago. Oh, Rochester! Rochester! Just a minute, boss. I'm burying something in the backyard. <laughs> what? Rochester, what do you bury? Oh, Thanksgiving turkey. I'm sick of it. <laughs> oh, for a minute I was worried. Come on in here. Well, Mr. Benny, if you like, I would gladly come back some other time. No, no, Professor, don't worry. We'll find it. <laughs> what is it, boss? Rochester, my violin is missing. It is? Yes, I've looked everywhere and it's gone. Well, what are we waiting for? Let's open a bottle of champagne. <laughs> Rochester, there's no time to be funny. Now help me find it. Okay, okay. Now let me see. If I was Mr. Benny's violin, what would I do? I take the strings off and lag myself to death. Now stop that. Rochester, my violin just couldn't work. Well, how do you like that? Somebody put it in the fireplace under those old newspapers. <laughs> Professor, put out that match. <laughs> oui, monsieur. Rochester, why'd you put my violin in the fireplace? I thought it would sound better if it was barbecued. <laughs> what? Save the net for me. Now cut that out. I'm going to take my violin lesson so you can leave now. Oui, monsieur. <laughs> monsieur Denis, let us commence. Okay. okay. Start with the menu at Le Antique. Yes, yes. Well, <laughs> No, no, Monsieur Denis. Not that. That, 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 that. No? I told you so many times. You must slide. Da, da, da. Oh. Now try it again. And this time, slide of the string. Yes, yeah. yeah, sir. Yeah. <laughs> 
Was that, uh, was that too high? I think so. You knocked off your toupee. <laughs> oh, oh, excuse me a minute. There. Shall I try it once more? Yes, but turn around and face me. I am. I am facing you. Oh, yes, you put your toupee on back well. <laughs> I did not. This is the one with the bang. <laughs> Now, try it once more and hold the bow firmly. Oh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. See, a bow is a wonderful thing, isn't it? Oui, monsieur. Now, try it once more. Yeah. You know, Professor, it's hard to believe that this music is coming from a horse's tail. <laughs> It is not hard to believe. <laughs> what? Proceed. Yes, sir. That sounds better. That's the door button. <laughs> oh, Rochester, answer the door. Rochester! Excuse me, Professor, I'll have to get it. <laughs> You smile, the song begins, and then I play my violin. It's magic. <laughs> la, 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 la. Oh, hello, Dennis. I came to say goodbye. I'm running away from home. <laughs> you're, you're what? I'm running away from home. Dennis, again with this. What are you talking about, running away from home? Yeah. Look, don't you realize... Well, that'll do to your parents. It'll break their hearts. What have you got in that suitcase? Food or clothing? I don't know. My mother packed it. <laughs> oh. Well, come on in. Okay. Now, look, Dennis. I know that sometimes you have arguments at home, but you ought to change your mind about running away. After all, it won't be long before you'll be missing your mother. I know. That's why I took along this picture. See? Wait a minute. This is a picture of Monty Woolley. No, it's my mother. I drew a beard on it. Stop being silly. You can't run away from home. I mean, what would you do? Where would you go? I'd go around the world in a boat. A boat? Yeah, they rent them to you at Westlake Park. <laughs> Fine, it's a great way to go around the world. Yeah. Hmm. Look, Marco Schmolo. <laughs> before you run away from home, how about letting me hear the song you're going to do on the program? Okay. Come on, let's hear it. Yeah, it was very good, Dennis. You can sing that as you sail around the world. When are you leaving? Stop talking about it. I'm seasick already. No. Well, sit down and rest for a few minutes. Next to the window. Okay. Look, at, I've got to... Rochester, answer the phone. I'm going to finish my violin lesson. Yes, sir. Hello, Mr. Bennett's resident. Star, stage, green, radio, and have your incap- income tax filed by the man who knows. Hiya, Chester. Can I speak to Buttons and Bucks? Yes, <laughs> Just a minute. It's for you, boss. Who is it? Bottles and bourbon. <laughs> Hello? Hiya, Jackson. It's the maestro. Hello, Phil. How are you? Swell, swell. Listen, Methuselah, the reason I called... <laughs> I called you because my is forming a baseball team, and I thought you'd be interested. A baseball team? Yeah, and I was wondering whether we should call it Harris's Hurricanes or Benny's Bombers. Harris's Hurricane? Well, that's ridiculous. After all, it is my program, so how can you call the team anything but Benny's Bombers? Okay, that'll be 126 bucks for the uniform. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Uh, tell me, Phil, uh, when is the first game of Harris's Hurricane? <laughs> huh? In about three weeks, Jackson, we're playing Kay Kaiser's orchestra. Well, I hope your boys are better baseball players than they are musicians. They sure are, Jackson. we got a great team. Listen to the lineup. I'm pitching, Sammy the drummer's catching, and Bagby the piano player's in right field. Now, what position is Remley in? Same as always, flat on his back. <laughs> I thought so. I'll pick him up if you want to say hello to him. <laughs> No, no, don't disturb him. Well, who are the other members of your team? Well, my three saxophone players are in the infield. Billy Smith's on third, Walter Sharp's on second, and Jimmy Watts on first. 
Who's on first? No, what's on first? <laughs> oh, Jackson, you're a natural born straight man. <laughs> Look, uh, look, Costello. <laughs> look, what what other teams are you going to play? Well, after Kaiser, we play Bob Crosby's orchestra, then Russ Morgan's orchestra, then Phil Spitalini. Oh. The one with Spitalini's orchestra is the night game. Oh, with light? Light's nothing. You think we're crazy? <laughs> oh, 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 oh. Hey, look, Jackson, why don't you drop around and watch the team practice sometime? I'll do that. Nice of you to call. So long, Phil. So long. Oh, say, Jackson. Yeah? Before I hang up, I want to ask you, what number would you like my orchestra to play on the program next Sunday? Oh, I don't know. Well, my band's been rehearsing a swell arrangement of the Sheik of Araby. Oh, that song making a comeback? Why, has it been away? (laughs) Certainly, Phil. That song's been dead for over 20 years. Well, then we'll play it. We can't hurt it none. No, but you can let it rest in peace. <laughs> Goodbye, Phil. So long, Yonkel. <laughs> what a baseball team that's going to be. Mr. Benny, let us finish the violin lesson. Oh, yes, yes, Professor. We'll go right in and... Oh, boss! What is it, Rochester? You told me to remind you that you wanted to listen to a certain ra- radio program at 5 o'clock. Oh, yes, yes. My girlfriend, Daisy Dickinson, is going to be interviewed. Rochester, turn on the radio. Yes, sir. And you say you've been selling perfume in that department store for 27 years? Yes, for 27 years. Every day I've been behind that perfume counter. Well, thank you very much, Miss, uh, Miss... Just call me Stinky. (laughs) Thank you. Mr. Benny, is that your girlfriend? No, no, of course not. And now continuing our series of interviews with people in every walk of life, we present another young lady here. What's your name, miss? Uh, Daisy Dickinson. Oh, that's her, Dennis. That's, that's my girlfriend. Huh? Uh, tell me, Miss Dickinson, uh, where were you born? Well, sir, I was born way down in Atlanta. Well, then that makes you a Georgia piece. <gasps> Don't let this fuzz on my face fool you, honey. <laughs> Fuzz. A little on her upper lip, she makes a big thing out of it. <laughs> and now, uh, Miss Dickinson, what is your occupation? Well, I'm a secretary for a radio advertising agency, Batten, Barton, Durson, and Osborne. Oh, an advertising agency. That's interesting. I suppose in that way you get to meet a lot of big stars. Oh, yes. But the only one I know real well is little old Jack Benny. You know, Mr. Benny, I... Shut can... up, kid. They're talking about me. <laughs> Uh, Miss Dickinson, uh, perhaps you can give us some inside information about Mr. Benny. Well, if it's not too personal. (laughs) Gosh, what a personality. (laughs) And now, Miss Dickinson, uh, on the radio, Mr. Benny portrays a somewhat parsimonious character. Is he that stingy in real life? Goodness, no. Why, on our very first date, he took me to Stero's. Oh, we had a wonderful dinner. And the bill came to $21.12. How did you know the exact amount of the check? Well, Jack's so playful, he kept blowing it over to me. (laughs) I see. And then when he ran out of breath, he paid and we left. (laughs) Darn right I paid. 21.12. Wow. Uh, well, Miss Dickinson, it's been a pleasure having you as a guest on our program. And before you go, we want to give you a case of our sponsor's product, Zingy Zesto, the best breakfast cereal of them all. Oh, thank you. Uh, remember, our breakfast food doesn't snap, pop, or crackle. It just sits in the bowl and minds its own business. <laughs> I'll have to get some of that. Uh, thank you, Miss Dickinson. All right, uh, Professor LeBlanc, now we can continue with the violin lesson. Thank you, monsieur. I'll get my violin and... Oh, excuse me, Professor. What a house. Always interruptions. ding 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 the phone door. Hey, 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 the radio. The door goes out. Professor. Well, I'd rather give me a lesson in the snake pit. Professor. <laughs> Professor, please. Well, I'll answer, Mr. Benny. Yes? Is Mr. Benny in on cold rain? Well, Mr. Benny, Claude Rains is here to see you. Claude Rains? Well, well. 
Ah, hello, Mr. Raines. I'm sorry to disappoint you, but you're here a day early. I didn't come for my laundry. <laughs> oh, then, uh, is this a social call? No, it's not a social call, Mr. Benny. It's business. Business? Yes. Uh, several weeks ago, I signed a contract to appear on the Ford Theater Hour. Well, how nice. This morning, Mr. Fletcher Markle, director of that program, informed me that I'm to appear with you next Friday in the Horn Blows at Midnight. Well, congratulations, Mr. Raines. Uh, this is a splendid opportunity for you. Well, I don't know. They told me the same thing when I joined a pyramid club. <laughs> Uncle got seven hundred dollars from a pyramid club. Oh, did he win? No, he held it up. Oh, be quiet! <laughs> now, Mr. Raines, Mr. Raines, I assure you that appearing with me in the Horn Bros at midnight on the Ford Theater Friday night will do you a lot for your career. Well, I won't argue the point, Mr. Benny. I respect your ability, but that picture received the worst reviews I ever read. So what? The critics don't count. It's the people in the trade who matter. The people in the trade thought the picture was terrible. So what? The people in the trade aren't important either. It's the public that counts. The public thought the picture was simply awful. How would they know? They didn't even go to see it. <laughs> anyway, Mr. Rain, I don't think you should pass judgment on the horn blows at midnight till you see it. Oh, but I did see it, Mr. Benny. In fact, I sat through the picture twice. Twice? Yes, I couldn't believe what I saw the first time. <laughs> Oh, then, uh, then you didn't like it? Didn't like it? Mr. Benny, that is the greatest understatement since that day in 1492 when Columbus said, I think I've found something. <laughs> you, you mean when Columbus discovered America? Congratulations, I didn't think you'd know. <laughs> I want to warn you, Mr. Benny, that immediately upon leaving here, I'm going to my lawyers to see what legal steps I can take to get out of appearing with you on the Ford Theater. Look, Mr. Rain. Hey, Mr. Benny. What? If my mother had married him, would I be a rainy day? <laughs> Dennis, if that was intended for a witticism, it certainly missed its mark. Boy, is he dumb. I made up a joke about his own name and he doesn't even get it. <laughs> Mr. Benny, Mr. Benny, I don't know whether this is your relative, friend, business associate, or servant, but whatever it is, I'm allergic to it. <laughs> Dennis, go sit down. I'm on your side. Sit down! <laughs> Now, look, Mr. Rain, your part in this picture that we're going to do has such great importance. Think of it. You're the chief of the planets in heaven. I'm an angel. And at your command, I come down to earth. At my command, you wouldn't stop there. <laughs> well, let me tell you something, Mr. Rain. Whether you realize it or not... You're getting a break appearing with me in the Ford Theater Friday night. It isn't every actor who can go on the radio with a big comedian. Mr. Benny, I've already made several guest appearances on the radio with the rather well-known comedian, Fred Allen. Fred Allen? Hoo-ha! Some comedian. <laughs> I gathered that you and Mr. Allen weren't too chummy from what he said about you. Oh, yeah? What did he say about me? He said you were the only comedian in radio who steals jokes from Milton Berle. <laughs> Mr. Rain, when you take a joke from Milton Berle, it's not stealing. It's repossessing. <laughs> now, let's not talk. Let's not talk about Mr. Allen anymore. I'm going to have my dinner soon. All right, Mr. Benny. <laughs> All right. But isn't that any way I can talk you out of doing the horn blows at midnight or at least letting me get out of my contract? No, Mr. Raines. My mind is made up, and I'll see you Friday night on the Ford Theater. Very well. But all I can say is this is the worst thing that has happened to me in all my 39 years. <laughs> well, I... What? You're... You're 39? Yes. Hey, that's a coincidence. 
The I'm, uh, I'm 39, too. Well, you can have it. You were there first. <laughs> what? Goodbye, Mr. Bennett. Goodbye. Goodbye. and him trying to get out of appearing with me next Friday night. Mr. Benny, please, I am waiting for you to finish the lesson. I have other pupils. Oh, yes, yes. Here is your violin. Thank you, thank you. Now, what do you want me to play? The same thing, the same thing. You haven't learned it yet. You haven't learned anything. Play it, play it! (laughs) All right, I mean, don't get so excited. I'll, I'll start at the beginning. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to thank Claude Rain for appearing on my program tonight, and he will soon be seen on Hal Wallace's production, Rope of Sand. He also will be heard with me Friday night on the Ford Theater, no matter what his lawyer says. <laughs> and next Sunday night on my own show, my guests will be Mr. and Mrs. Ronald Coleman. Good night. Good night. Strike program starring Jack Benny with Mary Livingston, Phil Harris, Rochester, Dennis Day, the Sportsman Quartet, and yours truly, Don Wilson. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, once every year, Jack Benny decides to tempt fate by going out to Santa Anita for the races. Yesterday was that day. So let's go back and pick up Jack and Rochester in the car. Gee, Rochester, I can't wait to get to the racetrack. Me too, boss. It's a good idea starting early. We miss all the heavy traffic. Uh Uh-huh. You know, Rochester, it's such a beautiful day. Let's put the top down. The top is down. (laughs) Then why is it so dark? We ain't out of the garage yet. (laughs) Oh. Well, let's hurry. Don't uh, don't drive too fast, Rochester. I won't, boss. Yeah, da 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 Ah, this is the life. Top down, beautiful day, balmy weather, sunshine. It sure is swell. It sure is. You know, Rochester, sunshine is the... Uh-oh. I think it's going to rain. I don't think so, boss. Then why did it get so dark? The car slipped into reverse. We're back in the garage again. <laughs> oh, for heaven's sake, Rochester, we'll never get to Santa Anita. Now, come on, we've got to pick up Miss Livingston. <laughs> Rochester, there's Miss Livingston's house. You better start putting on the brakes. The brakes wore out last week. No brakes, and how do you stop the car? You know that chain I've got up here with the hook on the end of it? Yes. Well, I drop it through the floorboards and pray for an open manhole. <laughs> well, now that's the silliest thing I've ever heard. <laughs> Livingston said she'd be waiting out in the front for me. Rochester, honk the horn. Yes, sir. With that... With that... With that horn, she must know it's me. Either you or the hit parade. See, what's keeping her? I'll go up to the door. 
Gee, I haven't seen Mary since she went to Palm Springs last week. Ah, hello, Mary. Hello, Jack. Sorry I kept you waiting. Oh, that's all right. But, Mary, it's such a beautiful day. Why are you wearing that heavy fur coat? Oh, darn it. I thought I was still in Palm Springs. <laughs> oh, was it cold in Palm Springs? Only the night. Well, how were the days? Rainy. Oh. <laughs> no, really? No, I'm just kidding, Jack. We had wonderful weather. And, you know, I stayed at the racket club. Oh, yes, yes. Who all was there, Mary? Well, there was Robert Taylor, Frank Sinatra, Walter Pigeon, and Gregory Peck. Well... You must have had a lot of fun. No, it was dull. Dull? With Taylor, Sinatra, Pigeon, and Peck? Yeah, I can't understand it. Who else was there? Mrs. Taylor, Mrs. Sinatra, Mrs. Pigeon, and Mrs. Peck. <laughs> oh, oh, well, I can understand it, kid. <laughs> Well, come on, Mary. We'll be late for the races. Huh? Hello, Rochester. Hello, Miss Livingston. Let's get going. Start the car, Rochester. Yes, sir. The motor is flooded. It's got it's got too much gas. Shall I throw it over my shoulder and burp it? <laughs> Never mind the wise crack. Try it again, Rochester. Yes, sir. It started. It started. Off we go into the wild blue yonder. Bye-bye. Roger, to turn to the left and follow this road uh, clear to the track. Yes, sir. You know, Mary, there's a horse I've been watching all season, and I'm sure it's going to win today. Uh, which one? Audacious Man. Audacious Man is one of the greatest horses. <laughs> was, was that a blowout? It wasn't a whistler. <laughs> How do you like that? It's the right rear. How could that tire blow out? The tube in it is practically new. Practically new? Yes. Boss, that tube's been fixed eight times with ten vulcanizing, four band-aids, and a Dr. Scholl fed. <laughs> Never mind. I just changed the tire. Okay. I don't know why it is, but everything has to happen to me. Just once I want to go to the races and... Hey, what happened to the hot rod? Hot oh, rod! Jack, it's Phil. Yeah, Mary, put down the jack and wave to him. <laughs> How are you, Phil? Fine, Libby. What's up? Got a flat? Yes, Phil. Fortunately, my car was going slow. It would have been dangerous if it had been blown out while we were going 70 or 80 miles an hour. Oh, Dad, stop bragging. It's only us. <laughs> hmm. Where are you going, Phil? To Santa Anita? No, I'm going to Pasadena to visit Sammy, my drummer. He was in a little accident the other night. Sammy was in an accident? What happened? Well, the boys in the band were having a party, and when <laughs> Sammy left, he was hit by a car while crossing the street. Gee, was it his fault? Well, it might have been. He was crossing on his hands and knees. <laughs> Fine. Phil, how many times have I told you and Sammy and Remley to behave yourselves? Well, it was only last Saturday that I gave Sammy a lecture. Well, he took it to heart. Yes, he joined Alcoholics Unanimous. <laughs> That's anonymous. Alcoholics Anonymous. No, it's unanimous. My whole band joined with him. <laughs> well, for once, you're right. Hey, I'd like to go to races with you, but i got to run along. Say, Phil, maybe you'd like me to uh, bet a little something for you. You know, there's a good horse called Audacious Man. I'm going to bet $5 on it. Well, in that case, I think I'll go to Santa Anita myself. Uh, Phil, I thought you said you couldn't go. I know, Libby, but if Jackson is going to bet 5 bucks on a horse, I want to see how many extra legs it's got. (laughs) 
Oh, stop being so smart, Phil. So long, plunger. See you later, (laughs) Phil. Gee. Gee, Phil sure drives a beautiful car. Alice must be nuts about him. (laughs) Now, let's get at that tire. It's all fixed, boss. I changed it while you were talking to Mr. Harris. Good, good. Then let's get going. See, I hope we won't miss any of the races. Well, so what if we miss the first couple? Gee, there's sure a big crowd here at the track. Yeah, and I feel lucky today. I'm sure Audacious Man is going to win. Ladies and gentlemen, the fifth race was a photo finish. We'll have the results in one moment. Oh, gosh, Jack, we missed five races already. Well, I don't care. I'm only interested in the sixth one. Say, Mary, let's go out and get a hot dog. But, Jack, we're in the clubhouse. Let's have lunch here. Well... All right. A waiter. Waiter. Yeah. <laughs> mm, uh, we'd, uh... We'd like to get something to eat. Uh, what would you suggest? A bib. You look like the sloppy type. <laughs> Never mind that. Now, what uh, what can we get in a hurry? Well, we have roast pork, corned beef, leg of lamb, sirloin tips, and bacon and eggs. And bacon and eggs sound good. Are the eggs fresh? Ooh, are they? <laughs> oh, well, I'll have that. Uh, Mary, uh, how, uh, how about you, Mary? Would you like bacon and eggs? Ooh. Ooh, what I? <laughs> Mary, uh, just bring us our orders, waiter, uh, as quickly as you can. Uh, yes, sir, and I'll seat you at that table over there. That's number one. Table number one? Thank you. Now, Mary, let's look over that list of entries for the next race. I want to see... If... Hey, Bud. Bud. Huh? Come here a minute. Me? Yeah, yeah. Excuse me a minute, Mary. Uh, what is it? You gonna eat here? Yeah. yeah. What table? Table one. Uh-uh. <laughs> what? Take number nine. Why, what's wrong with table one? Bad position. It's on the rail. Look, look. Number nine is on the outside. You won't get boxed in. <laughs> well, look, uh, I'm very happy with no, table think one. Think it over, bud. Number one is a card table. A card table? Yeah, yeah. If it carries too much weight, its legs will fold. <laughs> Gee, I never thought of that. Now, now look at the breeding on table number nine. The breeding? It's by Bird's Eye Maple out of Grand Rapids. <laughs> God, I didn't even think they knew each other. Get wise, bud. Think it over. Okay, okay. Thanks for the tip. Say, Mary. Have you have you decided yet what horse you're going Ladies to Ladies and gentlemen, as you all know, the last race was a photo finish, but you won't know the results till tomorrow. That's strange. The picture turned out so good that we've decided to show it at your neighborhood theater. <laughs> hmm. Mary, have you figured out yet what horse you're going you're to... You're bacon and eggs already. I put them on table number one. Number one. Do you think I'm a sucker... Put it on number nine. Number nine? Yes, number nine. Okay, okay, you make me sick. Well, you're no health resort for me either. Now, come on, Mary. When we finish eating, we'll walk around. There are probably a lot of people around here we know. Now, Benita, may I have your pencil? Here you are, Ronnie. I'm so 
so glad you brought me to the races today. This is my first time, you know. Yes, yes, I know. Now, let's see. In this next race... And, darling, did you notice the women? Most of them are wearing some lovely Sarah, things. Benita, please, please. I'm trying to pick a horse for the next race. But, Ronnie, you don't have to do all that figuring. Um... Why not just bet on the winner? <laughs> Just b- bet on the winner? Well, certainly. Isn't horse racing like wrestling? Don't they know ahead of time? <laughs> uh, I'm afraid now, darling. You see, horse racing is a sport. Wrestling is just something they use to sell television sets. <laughs> Benita, uh, would you like some coffee? I'm not going into the clubhouse with you carrying that Oscar under your arm. <laughs> yeah, that's just it. We won't have to go to the restaurant for coffee. That's why I brought my Oscar. What? Well, you see, the head screws off. I made it into a thermos bottle. <laughs> oh, darling, you shouldn't have done that. It was quite an honor winning the Academy Award. By the way, what picture do you think will win this year? Oh, I don't know, Benita. There are so many good ones to choose from. Johnny Belinda, Treasure of Sierra Madre, Hamlet. What about Nightmare Alley? Oh, Nightmare Alley is not a new picture. Oh, it is? No, they took the horn blows at midnight and ran it backwards. (laughs) I just can't decide on a horse for this next race. Well, Ronnie, why don't you bet on the horse that Mervyn Leroy told you about? Oh, yes, yes, yes. He gave me early bird. And he knows horses. Yes, and look, it's a long shot, too. Well, that settles it. That's the horse I'm going to bet on, early bird. Good for you. Oh, my, what a big crowd here today. Hmm. Seems as though everyone we... Oh, Ronnie. Yeah, what is it, Benita? Look to your left, six hours open. Who oh, is it? Jack Benny. What? <laughs> oh, oh yeah, what will we do if he sees us? I don't know about you, Benita, but I'm going down to the starting gate and run around the track. <laughs> <laughs> well, shake hands with your jockey. <laughs> Benita, are you sure that's Benny? Let's have a look through those field glasses. Yes, yes, it's Jack, all right. You're looking through the wrong end. I know what I'm doing, darling. It puts him farther away from me. Did <laughs> <laughs> you marry with him? I, I don't know. I just lost him in the crowd. Say, Jack, the next race will be on a few minutes. Aren't you going to make your bet? Yes, Mary. Five bucks on Audacious Man. Hello, Mr. Benny. Hello, Mary. Hello, Dennis. Dennis, I didn't know you came to the races. Oh, sure. I just cleaned up on a horse in the fourth race. Number 12. Number 12? What was the horse's name? Who cares about his name? It's the number that's important. That's my system. You've, uh, you've got a system? Yeah. Well, Dennis, according to your system, how come you bet on number 12? Well, I took the jockey's weight, which is 105, and then I divided it by three because this is the third month of the year, and that makes 35. Uh Uh-huh. And then I subtracted my age, which is 26, and 26 from 35 leaves 9. Uh-huh. And then I added 3 and bet on number 12. (laughs) Wait a minute, Dennis. I followed you all the way down to 9. Why did you add 3? How else can you get to 12? You shouldn't be here at all. You don't know anything about horses. Oh, don't be too sure about that, Toots. <laughs> I know all about races and betting. I follow every racetrack in the country. Oh, you know all about betting, eh? Well, let me ask you something. What's a mutual? That's a network that didn't offer you a job. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I didn't think you'd know. know? Hey, Mr. Benny, I meant to tell you, you were sensational on the Ford Theater Friday night. Simply wonderful. Oh, did you hear it, kid? No. (laughs) Then who told you how good I was? You did. Oh, yes, yes. Come on, let's go over to the $5 window, Mary, and... Hey. Hey, Mary, look down there. Where? 
Down that aisle. Isn't that Ronnie and Benita Coleman? Oh, yes. Well, come on. Let's go over and talk to them. Jack, they came to the track to, en- to enjoy themselves. Now, leave them alone. But, Mary, if they knew I was here and didn't stop to say hello, they'd be heartbroken. <laughs> now, come on. Right down this aisle. Gee, Ronnie is handsome. I wonder how I'd look in a mustache. Well, they, they don't look good on everybody. Now, take my sister, Babe. <laughs> Oh, be quiet. Your sister, babe. Hello, Benita. Hello, Mary. Hello, Jack. Why, Ronnie, look who's here. Oh, hello, Ronnie. Aren't you surprised at meeting me here? Oh, Emma. (laughs) You know, you know, Ronnie... There must be a hundred people here that I know, and yet I just had to come over and say hello to you. Well, thank you, Jack. Now, don't keep the other 99 waiting. (laughs) Oh, I can see them later. Say, Ronnie, what horse are you going to bet on? And now, coming out on the track are the horses for the sixth race. Ronnie, have you picked your horse yet for the next race? Uh, Yes, Jack. Come here a minute. Huh? Who are you betting on? Early bird. Uh uh-uh. uh. <laughs> what? Early bird hasn't got it. Jack! Mary, I'm only going to tell him to bet on my horse. Look, Ronnie, forget about early bird and put your money on Audacious Man. He'll win by eight lengths. Now, Jack, my mind is made up. I'm going to play early bird. But look, Ronnie, it's silly to come out here and just bet on any horse, especially after driving six hours to get to the track. Well, in my car, it's 40 minutes. <laughs> Gee. Look, Ronnie, I've been studying these horses all season. I know what I'm talking about. Audacious man can't lose. Oh, I'm sorry, Jack, but I'm betting on early bird. Well, okay, Ronnie, it's your dough. But don't say I didn't tell you. The horses are nearing the starting gate. Well, I'm going up the window to make my bet. Five dollars on the nose. Now, if you girls will excuse me, I'll go up and place my bet, too. Ronnie. Yes, Benita? Jack Benny is betting five dollars on Audacious Man. I know. Well, Ronnie, if Jack bets five dollars on a horse, he must know something. Well, yes. No, I don't care. I'm going to stick with early bird. But, darling, think of it. Jack Benny betting five dollars. <laughs> Benita, maybe you're right. I'll take his advice and play Audacious Man. I'll be back. Benita, it's fun coming to the races once in a while, isn't it? Yes, I've enjoyed it tremendously. In fact, Ronnie and I are making a day of it. On the way home, we're stopping off for dinner at the Sportsman's Lodge. The Sportsman's Lodge? Jack is having dinner there, too. Oh, well, uh, please don't mention it in front of Ronnie. I've got my heart set on going. (laughs) The horses are in the starting gate. Well, I did it, Benita. I bet on Jack's horse. A hundred dollars on audacious man. Good. Now they're all lined up. They'll start as soon as they can quiet autocrat. He's a little fractious. He's dancing around a bit. Whoops, he backed out of the gate. Now he's dancing back into the gate. As you know, autocrat was trained by Arthur Murray. (laughs) Say, this is exciting. And there they go. Going into the first turn, it's Pitwood in front. Natural is second, straddle is third, early bird is fourth, and audacious man. Come on, come on, audacious man. Ronnie, stop waving your ass. A coffee is coming out of its ear. <laughs> I wonder what happened to Jack. Coming around the far turn, it's still Hedgewood in front. Natural is second, straddle is third, audacious man is now fourth by half a length, and hit it squad. Come on, audacious man. Audacious man. Driving down the home stretch, it's straddle in front. Here I am, kid. Jack Benny, I bet on the horse you gave me. 
You did? Ronnie, how could you be so silly? Ooh. <laughs> Benita, you shouldn't have done that. He's wearing glasses. <laughs> Oh, Ronnie, what's the difference if you did lose? We had fun here at the races. I don't mind losing, Benita, but why did I let Benny talk me into betting on his horse? I should have my head examined. And now, coming across the line of finish, is audacious man! <laughs> Go on, you glooper! Your mother wears blinkers! <laughs> Program starring Jack Benny with Barry Livingston, Phil Harris, Rochester, Dennis Day, and yours truly, Don Wilson. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, for years, millions of people have heard Jack Benny on the radio. Last Tuesday night, our star made his debut on television here on the West Coast. And the reaction to Jack's first television appearance was electrifying. One man prominent in the entertainment world is Mr. Bertram Scott, who said, I think Jack Benny going on television is going to be a wonderful thing for our industry. And what is your occupation? I'm a theater manager. <laughs> hmm. Thank you, Bertram Scott. And now, ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, we bring you Jack Benny. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, Bob. Hello again. Uh, this is Jack Benny talking. <laughs> and, Don, without trying to sound hammy, I want to say that my first show was a success. I know it was, Jack. It was wonderful. Uh, you, did you see it? Oh, yes, Jack. I invited 25 guests over to watch you on my television set, and I thought you were terrific. Well, thank you. What did all your guests think of the program? They didn't see it. They were sitting behind me. <laughs> Hey, Jack, I bought a television set just so I could see your show last Tuesday. Oh, that's nice, Mary. How'd you like it? Well, I don't think they got it installed right. I kept getting three stations at the same time. Well, gee, didn't you see me at all? Yes, but all night long you kept fighting with Hopalong Cassidy to see who would marry gorgeous George. <laughs> oh, I get it. Wrestling. <laughs> See, that's a shame, Mary, and everybody was so good on that show. Oh, Jack, there was one thing I noticed on that show. You looked so much taller than usual. Well, actually, I was a little taller, Don. Oh, were you wearing elevator shoes? No, he was so busy, he couldn't get to the bank to make a deposit. <laughs> make a deposit, make a deposit. <laughs> Some joke. <laughs> You know, Mr. Benny, my whole family watched you on television Tuesday night. Oh, did they, Dennis? Uh, what did they think of it? Well, my mother said if you're really 39, our television set has a wrinkled screen. <laughs> your mother, your mother, she doesn't know anything. That's a fine way to talk about a poor woman who's in the hospital with 72 stitches in her hand. Oh, oh I'm sorry, Dennis, that's a shame. How'd your mother happen to cut her hand? When you came on, she took a swing at the screen. <laughs> Certainly glad I went on to you. Well, look, Dennis, I don't care what your mother thinks. Everybody else Hey, look, thought... Jackson, don't let them kid you. I saw you on television. You're pretty good. Pretty good. <laughs> Thanks, Bill. By the way, uh, how did you like the ending when I played my violin? I didn't see that part. Just you picked up your fiddle, the bartender turned off the set. <laughs> Oh, so you, uh, you were in a bar. No, it was Tuesday. That's the night the bartender comes to my house. <laughs> oh, fine. Phil, I never saw a guy like you. If it isn't drinking, it's pool. If it isn't pool, it's horse racing. If it isn't horse now, racing... wait a minute, Dad. Don't blow your artificial top. <laughs> 
You know, you went to the races yourself Saturday. I know. Oh, by the way, Jack, I meant to ask you, uh, how'd you make out at Santa Anita? Never mind, Don. Well, let's forget it. Well, let's get on with the now, show. Now, for heaven's sake, Jack, are you still upset about losing? Mary, I'm not upset, and I never was upset over losing. Oh, you weren't, eh? Don, you should have seen the way Jack moped all the way home from Santa Anita. <laughs> really, Mary, what happened? Oh. Well, <laughs> Jack won on the sixth race, but he lost it all back and a little more in the last two. When the races were over, Jack, Dennis, and I were riding home in Jack's car. We rode for about 15 minutes in silence. <laughs> Gee, it's fun going to the races once in a while. Yeah, I had a wonderful time. How much did you lose, Mr. Benny? Oh, only $4.75. It was nothing, really. Well, Jack, I'm glad to see you taking it like a good sport. Of course, Mary. What's $4.75? It's just the deposits on 237 Coca-Cola bottles. <laughs> Yeah, da dee da dum, da dee da dum, da dum. How'd you make out, Dennis? I won eight dollars. Oh. You won eight. Well, I only lost four seventy-five. Did you win, Mary? No, I lost twelve dollars. Good, good. I mean, that's too bad. That's too bad. Jack, I think you really are mad because you lost. Don't be silly, Mary. It doesn't bother me at all. You know how I feel about money. Hey, you know. Easy come, easy go. <laughs> now let's let's forget it. Yeah, da dee da dum, da dee da dum, da dum. Rochester, did you lose much? No, boss. I won twenty nine dollars. Hmm. <laughs> Look, Rochester, you have no business betting on the races because you can't afford to lose. But, boss, I told you I won. I won. All right, all right. Just watch your driving. <laughs> That's what you're here for. Look, Jack, if losing bothers you so much, we won't discuss the races anymore. Mary, I had completely forgotten about losing that $4.75 so you brought it up. Now, let's change the subject. The only thing on my mind now is that I want to get home for dinner by 6 o'clock. What time is it now? 4.75. I mean... <laughs> now, look, once and for all, let's forget about the whole thing. What was that? The exhaust pipe dropped off the car. Oh. You know, Jack, Ronald Cohn was sure mad at you for touting him onto the wrong horse. He wasn't mad, Mary. It was Benita who slugged me. <laughs> anyway, I tried to help him all I could. <laughs> what was that? The generator dropped off. <laughs> oh. For heaven's sake, first the exhaust pipe drops off, then the generator. I don't see how this car keeps going. It's a match well that's good to the last drop. <laughs> But you know, boss, I think this car needs a checkup. It ain't running so good. Well, perhaps it could use some oil. Why don't you give it some side tan? It's old enough. <laughs> no, Rod, don't you remember we tried that once and Maxwell spelled backward means nothing, you know? Now, let's drive right on home and step on it, will you? Ah, that's better. Gee, we sure must be going fast. The foxtail just flew off the radiator cap. Lucky I caught it. That's not a foxtail, and put it back on my head. <laughs> oh, Rochester. Rochester, there's a man standing there motioning for us to stop. Pull over to the curb. Okay. Yeah? Mister, do you know how to get to the public library? No. No, I don't. Well, you go back two blocks, sign left, and you can't miss it. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, turn around, Rochester. What? <laughs> I don't want to go to the library. That's the silliest thing I've ever heard. Come on, let's get going. 
da dee da dum da dee da dum See, I'm getting kind of thirsty. Well, if you're thirsty, Jack, there's an orange juice stand right up ahead. Oh, yeah, look at that sign. All the orange juice you can drink for ten cents. <laughs> Rochester! Don't look at me, Mr. Danny stepped on the brake. <laughs> well, of course, I'm thirsty. Say, Jack, isn't that Phil Harris over there? Yeah. Hey, Phil! Huh? Oh, hi, you Libby. Hi, Jackson. Hey, Phil, this is really a surprise, seeing you drink orange juice. How come? Well, I've been living in California 15 years, and I thought it's about time I found out what the stuff tastes like. <laughs> well, how do you like it, Phil? For nothing proof, it ain't bad. <laughs> well, you ought to know. Hey, Phil, how'd you make out at the races today? Great, kid. I won 90 bucks. You won 90 bucks. Won 90 bucks. <laughs> Show off. <laughs> What's eating him? What's wrong with my one in 90 bucks? I think it's a dirty trick. Puts Alice in a higher bracket. <laughs> Phil, Jack's upset because he lost 475. He even got mad at the horse. I was not mad at the horse. Then why did you shove your hand down his throat to get your lump of sugar back? <laughs> oh, stop. Now, look, kids, I don't want to hear any more about my losing money. It isn't such a terrible thing. Now, come on, kid. Hey, kid, let's have some orange juice. I gotta run along, Jackson. See you later. Okay. Hey, Phil, wait a minute. Say, Mary, watch me catch him this time. Oh, Phil. Yeah, Jackson? Uh, do you know how to get to the public library? Sure, you go back two blocks, turn left, and you can't miss it. I ran into the same guy. <laughs> oh. And next week, I'm going up to High Sierras and Hunt Bear. Do you want to play some more? <laughs> No, no, go on home, go on. Come on, Rochester, we'll drop Miss Livingston and Dennis Day off and then get me home. I'm so tired, I want to go to bed. Oh, it's nice being home. and It'll feel good to get undressed. Gosh, what a relief to get this high starch collar off. I only wore it one day. It almost drove me nuts. I wonder how Hoover stood it all these years. <laughs> well, off with my sweater. <clears throat> off with my shirt. Gosh, when I tell people I used to be a lifeguard, they laugh at me. <laughs> Just look at those muscles. Look at those muscles, how they bulge. Hard as rocks. I gotta stop wearing them in the shower. The buckles are getting rusty. <laughs> ah, I feel good to get my shoes off. Aren't the track sure tires you out, then? Burns me up the way everybody thinks I'm mad because I lost four dollars and seventy-five cents. Four seventy-five. I'll make that up in no time. One guest appearance with Bob Hope and I'm all set. <laughs> See, it's good to get in bed. Yes, sir. Oh, gosh, I'm tired. What a day. There's nothing I like. Make a good night's rest. Four seventy five. 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 God, what a crowd at the track. Oh, mister, mister, would you like to buy a program? A program? Yes. How much is it? Four seventy five. <laughs> oh, is that all? Here you are. Here's a dollar tip. 
Gee! Uh. Is the next race about to start? No, it don't start for 20 minutes yet. What are the people cheering about? They saw you give me that tip. <laughs> oh. I gotta win today. I gotta win today. The horses are coming out on the track for the next race. Johnny Longdon looks nervous on autocrat. Eddie R. Carroll looks anxious on triplicate. Ralph Neves looks calm on Hedgewood. Jack Benny looks beautiful on television. Yeah, I do, don't I? I gotta win today. I gotta win today. Hey, Bud. Bud. Huh? Come here a minute. What? Who are you betting on? Hedgewood. Uh-uh. What? Bet on orange juice. Orange juice? Look at the odds. All you can drink for ten cents. Hey, wait a minute. Wait a minute. You're Mary Livingston. What are you trying to... Uh, just a minute, bud. Leave her alone. Who are you? I'm her sister, babe. <laughs> Oh, yes. You're prettier than your picture. Oh, look, there's Dennis. Dennis! Dennis! Uh, you're confused, old boy. I'm Ronald Coleman. Well, if you're Ronald Coleman, where's your mustache? Washington took us. Income tax, you know. Oh, yes, yes. I got a win today. I got a win today. I know what I'll do. I'll go to the paddock and look at the horses. Here's the horse I'm going to bet on. Hello, horsey. <laughs> you know, you know, I bet a lot of money on you. <laughs> are, are you going to win today? Ooh, am I? How come you can talk? I can't. The horse next to me is a ventriloquist. <laughs> Wait a minute. That's an old joke. I can't help it. The other horse is Fred Allen. <laughs> oh. The race is about to start. Make your bet. My bet. My bet. I gotta make my bet. I gotta win four seventy five. Oh, John, the window is closed. I'll rap on it. Open the window. Open the window. What happened? When you opened the window, the gasoline ran out. <laughs> what? Oh, here's the betting window. Mister, mister, here's ten dollars. Give me a ticket on library. You got the wrong window. Go back two blocks and turn left. <laughs> Thank you. There they go. Duplicate is in front. Autocrat is second. Library is third. And Don Wilson is fourth, fifth, and sixth. <laughs> John Wilson. Coming around the far turn, library is first, straddle is second, Phil Harris is bottled in, and he likes it. <laughs> Come on, library. Only two blocks more and turn to your left. Come on, library. Now coming to the line of finish. Wait a minute. The finish line keeps moving ahead. The horses can't reach the finish line. Come on, library. Come on, library. The finish line is still moving away. It's moving away. It's passing through Anaheim, Azusa, and... Come on, library. Come on, run, run. If you don't win, I'll lose 475. I'll lose 475. Come on. Come on, run. 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 Huh? Boys, you must have been dreaming about horses. How do you know? You're riding the dead boat. <laughs> What? Hard saddle! <laughs> Gee, Rochester. I just had the most exciting dream. 
I won't be able to go back to sleep now. Give me some oval team. Yes, sir. Oh, by the way, boss, after you went to bed, a special delivery came for you. Special delivery? What was it? A refund from the Income Tax Bureau. How much? How much? Four dollars and seventy-five cents. <laughs> Good. Never mind the Ovaltine. I can sleep now. Good night, Rochester. Good night, boss. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we'll be with you again next Sunday night at the same time, and we're going to have a special guest star. Who's it going to be, Jack? I'm not going to tell you, Mary, but I'll give you some clues. If he isn't tall and thin, he'll have red hair and freckles. But, Jack, that's so confusing. Well, Mary, next week for our guest, we're going to have either Van Johnson or Gary Cooper. Whichever one I can get cheaper. (laughs) Good night, folks. Starring Jack Benny with Mary Livingston, Phil Harris, Rochester, Dennis Day, and yours truly, Don Wilson. (laughs) Ladies and gentlemen, the Jack Benny Show holds its rehearsals on Saturday. So, we'll take you back to yesterday in Studio B at CBS. Well, kids, if everybody's here, let's start rehearsing. Well, Jack, Mary isn't here yet, and neither's our guest star, Van Johnson. Both late? (laughs) Gee. Gee, that's funny. (laughs) Dennis. Dennis, what are you laughing at? You said it was funny. (laughs) Dennis, when I said it was funny, I meant it was hard to believe. That's right, kid. When Jackson says something's funny, it's hard to believe. (laughs) Phil, stop being on my side. Maybe Van Johnson got mixed up about the time. I hope he gets here. Stop worrying, Dad. What do you need Van Johnson for when you got me? Me, the guy who's got so much charm, Paramount wants me to play opposite myself in a picture. (laughs) Yes, Phil, I know the picture. Kiss the scotch off my hand. (laughs) Look, uh... Luke is comparing himself to Van Johnson. You know, Jack, I don't want to brag, but I've had plenty of people compare me to him. Don, the van they were comparing you with... (laughs) Need I go further? (laughs) The van has furniture sticking out of it. (laughs) But I can't understand... Oh, Rochester. Yes, boss? There's a phone out in the hall. Call Van Johnson's house and see if he's left for the studio. Yes, sir. Have you got a nickel? Oh, yes, yes. Here, I'll get it out of my coin purse. <laughs> Here you are, Rochester. Here's a nickel. Mm, look at that buffalo gulp to break there. <laughs> Never mind. Now, here's Van Johnson's number. Go out in the hall and call him. Yes, sir. Boss, the boss must be losing up. I said, roll back to me. <laughs> now, uh, now go call Van Johnson. Yes, Boss, the number you gave me isn't right. It isn't? 
Well, okay. Never been late before. Am I driving too fast for you, Van? No, no, Mary. You're doing fine. Mary, it was nice of you to pick me up, and it's really a beautiful drive from Beverly Hills to the studio. Well, I knew you'd enjoy the ride, so I took a little roundabout way. I'm glad you did. I've never seen San Diego before. <laughs> well, it won't be long now. We're back in Los Angeles. Say, Mary, I thought you were in a hurry to get to the studio. Why do you keep driving around this same block? Well, that building there is the May Company. I want the girls to see me. <laughs> You better stop, Mary. The light just turned red. Okay. You know, when you came by my house... Pardon me, mister, but I can't get a cab. Would you give me a lift as far as... No. Oh, no, it isn't. Oh, Sterling Holloway! (laughs) What a stall. If she'd have gotten in here, I'd have punched her right in the nose. (laughs) Uh, Say, Van... How do you happen to be a guest on Jack's program? Well, he made such an attractive offer, I couldn't turn it down. Jack made you an attractive offer? Mm -hmm. What was it? He said if I gave a good performance, he'd show me how to make nickels roll back to me. (laughs) (laughs) But no kidding, Van. How much is he paying you to be his guest? Well, as a matter of fact, I forgot to discuss money when I had lunch with him yesterday. Lunch? Did you pick up the check? No, he did. You've been paid. Well, gee, I better drive faster. We'll be late for rehearsal. Gosh, I can't understand what's keeping Mary and Van. Oh, Jack, I've just been looking through this Radio Mirror magazine, and there's something in here very nice about you. About me? Gee, that's swell, Don. What does it say? It says, uh, genial Don Wilson, who is loved by millions of people, was again selected as radio's number one announcer. Don, why'd you say that was about me? If I hadn't, you wouldn't have listened to it. <laughs> what, do you, what do you mean I wouldn't have listened to it? If I'm that kind of a guy, would I be going all the way to San Francisco to appear on the newspaper men's frolics on next Saturday, March 26th, in the Civic Auditorium at 8 o'clock? <laughs> if they don't pay my railroad fare after that, let them get Maury Amsterdam. <laughs> Say, Phil, while we're waiting, why don't you run through your band number, and then we can... Hello, Jack, we're here. Well, hello, Mary. Hiya, Van. Hello, Jack. Yeah, I'm glad you finally got here. We just started to rehearse. Now, Van, I'd like you to meet our little group of thespians. Uh, This is Don Wilson. Pleased to meet you, Don. I'm certainly glad to meet you, Van. Say, Jack, are those his chins, or is he chewing on a Venetian blind? (laughs) (laughs) Those, uh, Those are his chins. And Van, uh... This is my orchestra leader, Phil Harris. Hello, Phil. Hiya, bub. What do you hear from the Hannah Rents Company? <laughs> Phil, for your Van Johnson, huh? Uh-huh. Tell me something, John. What makes all them dames so crazy about you? Oh, I don't know. I guess it's just sort of a psychological phenomena. I'm dead. <laughs> Phil, Phil, please. And Van, Van, this is my vocalist, Dennis Day. I'm glad to know you, Dennis. Should I swoon, Mr. Benny? No, no. No, Dennis, that's for girls. Just say hello. Hello. And now, Van, I want to tell you well, about... Say, Mr. Johnson. Yes, Dennis. My mother thinks you're wonderful in pictures. Well, thank you. Every time you smile, she breaks out in big red blotches. Dennis. When she saw you in command decision, she came home and burned her wedding dress. That's enough, Dennis. And now, Van, I my want... My father got so mad, he threw her teeth in the Bendix. <laughs> Dennis. Before we could stop the machine, she ate up her nightgown. <laughs> Boy, sit down. <laughs> now, Van, before we start rehearsing, would you mind stepping into my dressing room a minute? I want to discuss our financial arrangements. Okay, Jack. Phil, while Van and I are gone, run through your number. Come on, Van. <laughs> Well, 
Well, Van, here we are in my dressing room. Shall I sit down? No, no, no. This will only take a second. Now, Van, when you make a guest appearance, how much do you usually get? Five thousand dollars. <laughs> Uh, sit down, Van. <laughs> uh, Van, I think $500 is a, is a little too much. I said 5000 That we're not going to discuss at all. <laughs> but to show you I'm willing to compromise, what would you say to $350? I'm sorry, Jack, but my price is $5,000. $5,000? Who do you think you are, Sterling Holloway? <laughs> Ben, let me ask you something. Why in the world do you want $5,000? Well, Jack, I've got to think of the future. The future? Yeah, when I'm 60 years old, I don't want to have to tell people I'm 39 so I can keep a job. <laughs> Look, let's not drag Al Jolson into this. <laughs> now, Ben, for the last time, what is your rock-bottom price? $5,000. Well, we'll... Just have to call it off, I guess. But I can understand your position, Van. After all, you are a big star, and all the girls are crazy about you. And... You know, that's a mistaken idea, Jack. Everybody thinks that the girls are just nuts about me, and it isn't true at all. It isn't? No. Confidentially, Jack, most of the glamour girls in Hollywood won't even spit at me. That's funny. They do at me. <laughs> I mean, they, they seem to think I'm hot stuff. <laughs> well, anyway, Jack, well, it's just as I told you. My being a lady killer is a, a fallacy. Girls don't go for me at all. Well, on second thought, I can understand that, Van. You see, freckles are all right for a huckleberry fin, but, but you see, you've got too many. Too many freckles? Yes. Now, take my complexion. It's perfectly clear. And look at your eyes. I don't know. They, they have no expression. They haven't? No. Now, if you'll notice, my eyes sparkle. Yes, they do. And, and look at your hair. My hair? Yes. Now take mine. Thanks. Put that back! <laughs> Not so far over to one side. <laughs> but that, that isn't all, Van. Girls go for me because I'm the outdoor type. You? The outdoor type? Yeah, I go hunting and fishing, and as a matter of fact, I just came back from a fishing trip on Lake Mead. I had a wonderful time. I don't know, there's nothing like the rugged life, you know? Oh, did you camp out in the open? No, no, I stayed in Las Vegas at the Flamingo Hotel. <laughs> at the Flamingo, eh? Say, that's really a classy place. You're not kidding. Yeah, I was only there a week, you know, and ten bucks went like that. <laughs> I didn't gamble much, you know, but I, um... <laughs> but I enjoyed it, you know? Well, I can't understand it, Jack. I spent three days at the Flamingo, and it cost me over $100. Well, you don't play a violin. <laughs> <laughs> See, it's amazing. It's amazing what you can pick up around the pool when people are having drinks, you know? <laughs> but, Van, getting back to your trouble with girls, maybe you've got the wrong approach. Maybe your technique isn't right. Now, I'll tell you what I'm going to do for you. I've got a date tonight with a girlfriend. I'm going to take her to Ciro's. I'll call her up right now and tell her to bring a girlfriend for you. And then just watch the way I operate. Well, Jack, I don't know. Are the girls pretty? Van, leave it to me. I know how to pick them. And you'll have a great time. I'll tell the girls to meet us in front of Ciro's at 8 o'clock. <laughs> Van Johnson for me. Yeah, and you can have him. As far as I'm concerned, I just as soon go out with men like Jack Benny. Why? Well, when a man like Benny tries to kiss you and you tell him to stop and he stops, you don't feel so disappointed. <laughs> Ain't it the truth? Imagine them keeping us waiting here in front of Cy Rose. I, w I wish they'd get here already. I can't wait to see Van Johnson. Johnson, Schmanson, I'm hungry. <laughs> oh, now, Great, but you shouldn't talk that way. You're hey, not... Mabel. Mabel, here they come now. Right out of that parking lot. Van, you shouldn't have paid for the parking. Well, I thought someone should. We've been sitting in the lot since 4 o'clock. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes. Yeah. Jack, do you think these girls will keep the date with us? Certainly. I told them to meet us right out in front of... Hey, hey there they are now. Where? 
right there. See those two? <laughs> Baron, come back here! Van. Van, what's the matter with you? I wouldn't go into Ciro's with them. Why not? One of them is old enough to be my mother. Which one? The one that looks like my father. <laughs> oh, Van, that, look at, look at Van. That, that's my girl. You've got the cute short one. Oh, you mean the short one with the red dress? She hasn't got a bad shape. That's the fire plug. <laughs> The girls are over there sitting on the curb. Now, uh... Now, come on. Okay, okay. Ah, hello, Gertrude. Mabel. Hello, Blue Eyes. <laughs> Everybody calls me that, man. I'd like to have you girls meet Van Johnson. Hello, girl. Gee, you're cute. Gertrude, he's mine. You've got Diamond Jim. <laughs> all right, all right. Now, come on, we'll go inside. Now, Van, as soon as we get in... Jack, let's call this thing off. I don't want to go into Ciro's with those two dames. But, Van, these girls are all right. In case anybody picks a fight with us, the tall one can whip her weight in wild <laughs> Oh, Come on, Van. Van, why are you taking my arm? I want to walk in with you. <laughs> Fine. Well, here we are. Oh, girls, you want to check your coat? them under the chairs. Good, good. Then we won't have to wait in line when we leave. Huh? Good evening. Uh, good evening. Uh, Captain, we'd like a table for four. Have you a reservation? Reservation? What do you think we are, Indians? <laughs> you Van. Know, oh, man, they're, they're so funny. You know, they're regular Abbott and Costello. You know? They look like them, too. <laughs> oh, I don't know. Say, Bud. Yeah? I'm talking to the captain. <laughs> uh, captain, uh, we don't have a reservation, but give us any table for four, will you? Yes, sir. Follow me. Here you are. Ah, thank you, Captain. May we have menus, please? Yes, sir. Thank you. Now, let me see. Hey, Gertrude, get a load of these prices. Yeah, and these fancy dishes. What's fishy swazzy? The girdle, that's a cold soup. Oh, good. Then I won't have to blow on it. <laughs> Gertrude, please. Uh, Van, would you like a drink? The quicker, the better. What? But don't let me drink too much. I don't want to see four of them. Okay. Captain, uh, bring us four martinis, and then we'll order the food. Yes, sir. Say, they have a nice orchestra here. Oh, Gertrude, would you like to dance? Uh, yeah, why do I put my shoes back on? <laughs> All right. Hey, Van, how about you and me? No, thanks. I'm not a very good dancer. Oh, don't worry, I'll lead you. Come on, don't be a schmo. Well, all right. Say, Gertrude, you're really a swell dancer. I love to dance with you. Gertrude, I'm talking to you. Oh, I'm sorry. I was just daydreaming. Oh. I'll give you a penny for your thoughts. No, thanks. It'll only roll back to you. <laughs> no, no, that only works with nickels. Ah, huh? oh, you're terrific, Van, and you said you couldn't dance. See, this is a beautiful song. Hey, Van, how about singing it to me, huh? No, no, Mabel, I can't sing. Oh, you do, too. I heard you in pictures. Come on, sing to me. Oh, all right. I enjoyed that dance, Gertrude. Now, let's sit down. Our drinks are on the table. Uh, shall we, uh, shall we order food now? Yeah, I want to see what that fishy swazzy looks like. Van, what are you going to have? I don't know. I'll think of something. Now, kids, let's order some food. Van, what are you going to have? Nothing, Jack. I don't feel like eating. Good, good. Uh, <laughs> uh, what are you going to have, Gertrude? I want some fishy swazi and a salami sandwich. <laughs> okay, what about you, Mabel? Well, as long as I'm in Cyro's, I'd like to try something different. Let me see now. I think I'll have this cabinet. What? It's right here on the menu, see? 
cabinet. That's T-bone. <laughs> oh, Captain. Are you ready to order now? Yes, I'll have a Caesar salad. We want some vichyssoise, a salami sandwich, and a T-bone steak. We have no T-bone. Yes, you have. It's right here on the menu. See? That's Tebony. <laughs> Tebony? Yes, that's a rabbit baked with an oyster in its mouth. <laughs> oh, oh. Well, I, I guess you were right, Mabel. Would you like that? Sure, anything as long as it's dead. <laughs> Say, Van. Van, would you like another drink? Yeah, but I'd like something stronger this time. Well, how, how about a zombie? No, thanks. The two we brought with us are enough. <laughs> Well, then have another martini. Okay, waiter, you've got our orders. And if you want a tip, you better shake a leg. Gertrude, behave yourself. Say, Van. Yeah? You sure are a cop. You told me you couldn't dance, and you dance like Arthur Murray. Look, Mabel. You told me you couldn't sing, and you sing like Frank Sinatra. Mabel, please. You and me got to see more of each other. You're just my type. All you have to do is say the word and believe me. I beg your pardon, Mr. Johnson, but there's a telephone call for you. Would you like to go out and answer it? Oh, I? <laughs> uh, get your phone call, Van. It might be important. Yes, excuse me, please. Say, he's, uh, he's a nice fella, isn't he, Gertrude? Yeah. Say, Blue Eyes, we're having so much fun. How about ordering some champagne? Champagne? Well... Sure, come on, Speedy. We only live once. Hey, waiter! Waiter, I got my champagne! Gertrude, not so loud. It's embarrassing. Well, get him. Since when are you in the blue book or who's what? <laughs> now, Gertrude, please, be quiet. Oh, put down. Yeah, don't be such a big shot. We're not riffraff, you know. <laughs> Girls, I'm just asking... Pardon me, Mr. Benny. Yes, Captain? There's a phone call for you. Oh, oh, excuse me, girls. I'll be right back. Hey, Jack. Jack. Wait a minute, Van. There's a phone call for me. No, no, there isn't. I sent the captain in to get you. What? Now, here's our chance to beat it. Hey, you're right, Van. You're right. Let's get out of here. But how do you know those dames won't follow us? Look, I've got their shoes. Come on, let's go. Say, Mabel, what is it, Geishas? Do you think they're coming back? I don't know. What time is it? It's 3.30 in the morning. <laughs> well, that ain't so late. I know, but this is Tuesday. <laughs> well, if they won't come back by Friday, we'll go. <laughs> Starring Jack Benny with Mary Livingston, Phil Harris, Rochester, Dennis Day, and yours truly, Don Wilson. Let's go out to Jack Benny's home in Beverly Hills where we find Rochester doing the spring cleaning. The vacuum's going, the dust is blowing, cause Benny's house must be clean. He doesn't really want his house clean. Just makes me work because he's mean. Rochester. The dirt may linger, won't lift his finger. All day in bed he reclines. But then in bed he has to recline. He isn't really 39. Rochester. Oh, 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 hello, boys. Hello, hello. Hello, boss. <laughs> hello, Polly. <clears throat> Well, Rochester, I'm glad to see you're doing the spring cleaning. The house looks... Rochester, where are those pretty lace curtains we had on the windows? Those were cobwebs. I brushed them off. <laughs> oh, the house is that dusty. It's your fault. No, it isn't, boss. I could clean the house in no time but if I could use the feather duster. The feather duster? Well, why don't you use it? It's spring. At this time of year, Polly falls in love with it. <laughs> oh. Rochester, you're imagining things. No, boss, she even talks to it. Polly talks to the feather duster? Yeah, this morning she stuck her head on the cage and said, 
Don't just stand there in the corner. Come up and see me sometime. Look. I even had to put the duster in a cage to keep her happy. Now, that's ridiculous. Now, go get it out of the cage and clean up the room. Well, okay. Hello, Polly. I'm sorry, but I have to take the duster. Now, let go of it. The sky is blue and the night is cold. Let go, let go, Polly. I gotta get the duster. The moon is old, but love is old. Let go. This is a heart of mine is singing. There, I got it. Lover, come back to me. <laughs> Rochester. Now that you got the feather duster, clean the chandelier. I tried to, boss, but I can't reach it. Well, I'll do it. Now, bend down, and I'll stand on your back. Huh? Go on, bend down. Like this? Yeah, bend down a little more. That's good. Now, let me get up on your back. Easy. Hold it. <clears throat> there. Okay, Rochester, hold still now while I dust the can. Come in! Rochester! <laughs> hello, Rochester. Oh, hello, Miss Livingston. Come on in. Thanks. I just came over to... Oh, hello, Phil. I didn't know you were here. <laughs> That's Mr. Benny lying on the floor. <laughs> Jack, what happened? Nothing, nothing. Anyway, Mary, I meant to call you. We aren't going to be able to rehearse today because I have something very important to do. Well, I'm glad I came over anyway. I got a letter from my mother, and I wanted you to hear it. A letter from your mother, eh? Well, what does the Ali Khan of Plainfield have to say? <laughs> well, just a minute. I'll read it to you. Okay. <clears throat> my darling daughter, Mary, just a few lines to let you know that everybody in the family is feeling fine except Susie, our cow. The cow? She's been sick for the past two uh, months now, and your father wishes she would get well so he can have his side of the bed back. Oh, no. <laughs> I'm sorry our cow is sick, but she certainly makes the room look better. I've always wanted an early American bed, so as long as she's lying on her back, I'm using her forelegs to hold up a canopy. <laughs> Leave it to your mother. Huh? Of course, it isn't easy milking the cow in this position. <laughs> you have to squeeze harder than usual because you're fighting gravity. <laughs> Gee, where do you put the bucket? <laughs> Quiet, Jack. However, your father doesn't know his own strength. This morning, he squeezed so hard, the milk shot up, ripped through the canopy, and wrote Honest John on the ceiling. <laughs> now, that's silly. Your mother. Your, I don't know. Your mother is just silly. You know, Mary, we've had a very long winter, but we knew it was coming. Because on February 2nd, when the groundhog came out of his hole, he saw your sister, babe, and ran back in again. <laughs> I knew she could do it. <laughs> No other news, but tell Jack we're going to see the picture he produced, a lucky stiff, at the Earl Theater in Philadelphia next week. Well. That is, we'll go to Philadelphia if the cow gets well. We haven't got a car, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Much love, Mama. You know, Mary, I'm proud of that picture. Claire Trevor was in it, and she just won an Academy Award. Come in! Oh, oh, hello, Dennis. Congratulate me, Mr. Benny. Congratulate me. Congratulate you. My aunt wow. won an Academy Award. Your aunt? Yeah, she went to the hospital last week, and yesterday she came home with little Oscar. <laughs> oh, you mean your aunt had a baby and they named it Oscar? Hey, your uncle must be very proud. Is it their first child? No, they have six and three more are on the way. <laughs> What? Three more children are on the way? Yeah, they're coming by bus from Fresno. <laughs> oh. Oh, then they have nine children now. That's right. Five boys and three girls. Well, that's very... Wait a minute. Five boys and three girls? 
Dennis, that's only eight. One of them got on the wrong bus. <laughs> Oh, for heaven's sake. Look, Dennis. Well, say, Mr. Benny, are we going to rehearse today? No, kid, because I have to leave in a little while. Say, Jack, as long as we're not going to have rehearse today, I think that I'll run along. Come in. Hiya, Jackson. Hello, Livy. You specimen of what a young man's fancy turns to. <laughs> Hello, Phil. Hiya, Phil. Say, I told you rehearsal was called off. What are you doing here? Well, look, Jackson, I started out to do some shopping in Beverly Hills, and I left home without a dime. So would you cash this check for me? Well, I don't know if I can, Phil. How much is a check for? I don't know. Read it. Alice made it out. <laughs> oh, here. Phil, Alice made this check out for $100. Yeah, I was a good boy all week. <laughs> Uh, what are you going to buy, Phil? Well, I want to get 50 feet of copper coils for my car. Uh, copper coils for your car? I'm putting in draft beer. <laughs> oh, fine. Draft beer. Yeah. I'll have the only hydromatic with a head on it. <laughs> oh, Harris, you ought to put some blue jay on your tongue. It's so carny. You... <laughs> You can say that again, Wanga. <laughs> well, look, Yonko, how about it? Can you cash my check for me? Well, I'm sorry, Phil. I, I haven't got that much money on me. Uh, uh, Phil, if you want a loan of a few dollars, I can help you out. Nah, that ain't necessary, Libby. I'll forget about the shopping. All I'll do is go get myself a haircut. I thought you said you were broke. Can't get a haircut without any money. Jackson, they cut my hair just for the thrill of it. <laughs> hmm, what a hammy guy. You know, Jack, Phil has a right to be conceited. He always looks so nice. Look at the way his clothes fit him, and look at his socks. They're bright without being loud. I'm glad you like them, Livy. Alice knitted them for me. They're gargoyle. That's our guy! <laughs> Well, our, a gargoyle is something ugly. Well, they ain't going to hang these in the art museum. <laughs> so long, straight man. See you again, Liv, you pretty thing. <laughs> bye, Phil. Goodbye, goodbye. <laughs> Say, Mary, it looks like it might rain. See, look at that dark cloud hiding the sun. That's a shadow. Don Wilson's coming up the walk. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Well, how are you, Phil? Where are you going? Down to get a haircut. I'd save you a curl, but they're all promised. <laughs> hello? Hello, Jack. This is Ozzie Nelson. Oh, hello, Ozzie. Jack, I just called to tell you that next week Harriet and I are going to start doing our program on CBS. Well, well, I'm glad to hear that, Ozzy. Uh, what day are you going to be on? Uh, a Sunday. Well, I think that's Sunday. <laughs> Ozzy, Ozzy. Yes. Uh, what time on Sunday? But right ahead of yours. <laughs> For a minute, I. <laughs> I thought I was going to have to sue somebody. <laughs> what a relief. Yeah. Hello? Hello? Huh? Hello? Hello? Is that you on the extension, Harriet? Yes, Ozzy. <laughs> Ozzy, would you mind hanging up? I've got to make a phone call. But, Harriet, I'm talking to... I don't care who you're talking to. I've got to find out where our laundry hasn't come back yet. <laughs> well, I've got him on the phone now. Ask him. <laughs> Uh, I was, uh, I was going to call you about that, Harriet. Oh, hello, Jack. Hello, hello, Harriet. I was going to call you about the laundry. There'll be a little delay because I scorch your underwear. My underwear? Yes, the ones with the lace. Oh, those are Aussie. <laughs> oh, then the H stands for his. I thought it was Harry. <laughs> Uh, Jack, since Harriet brought up the subject, uh, I'd like to make a complaint. 
What is it, Ozzy? We're always open for suggestions, you know. Well, uh, Jack, you've been putting a little too much starch in our underwear. Too, uh, too much starch? Yes, you see, we don't mind it on Sundays because we have to stand up at the microphones anyway. Uh-huh. Uh, but on weekdays, we like to relax. Oh, oh, well, then I'll... I'll try to cut down on the starch. I wish you would. Every time Ozzy sits down, it sounds like he's cracking his knuckles. <laughs> well, I'll take care of it. Goodbye. Goodbye. Bye. Rochester, a little less starch in the Nelson's laundry. But you'll have to excuse me now, fellas. Uh, I have to leave. I...